All right, everyone, would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. All right, welcome, everyone. This is the uh, September 22nd meeting of the Town of Canandaigua Planning Board. Um, the protocol here is very simple. Uh, we go through the, uh, the agenda item by item. On each item, we, uh, uh, we ask the presenter or the applicant to make a presentation uh, regarding their, uh, what they're seeking from the board. And then after the presentation, the uh, planning board <clears throat> will uh, ask questions. And once uh, we've uh, questions our, questioned ourselves out, we will uh, go to the public for any comments or questions from the public. And then we'll come back to the board for any further deliberations and conclusions by the applicant. And then we'll take a vote. And uh, we hope to do this all uh, uh, in good order without a, we've got 18 people I see on the call at least, now up to 22. So we need some, some order. And if you would like to speak, uh, please raise your hand uh, via Zoom and uh, Eric will recognize you and let me know so I can recognize you. And then uh, you can uh, say what you wanna say. Uh, we would ask that if you are going to speak, you give us your name, your address, and uh, that would be helpful to, uh, to our secretary as far as recording the, uh, the names of people who spoke. All right, let's uh, go through the, uh, the attendance uh, board members. Uh, Karen Blazy. Here. Ryan Stachek. I am here, thank you. Okay, good, Ryan. Gary Humes. Yep, I'm here. Bob LaCourse. I'm here. And Amanda Van Laken. Here. Okay, we have uh, John Rotella, who's our recording secretary. Welcome back, John. Here, yeah. thank you. Uh, we also have uh, Lance Brayvale, who's uh, representing the MRB group, our town engineers. We are also joined this evening by our town attorney, uh, Chris Nadler. Hello, hello. And, and our uh, uh, director of development, uh, pl town planner, Eric Cooper, is, uh, is at the controls. I'm here. Um, there are two public hearings tonight. Uh, they've both been advertised in the Daily Messenger, uh, according to a legal notice we received, and they were advertised in the Messenger on September 11th. So they've been duly advertised. At this point, I will open the floor up to anyone out there in the virtual land who would like to say something on an item that is not on the agenda. If you want to uh, make a comment, uh, bring something to our attention, now's the time to do it. Otherwise, we'll uh, proceed into the applications. Okay, I assume everyone's here for an application that's on the agenda. With that being said, uh, let's move on to the uh, first public hearing. Now, is, uh, is uh, Jim Fay here? Is he on the call yet? Okay, I was gonna try to get Jim out of the way because uh, we had sort of, uh, uh, not told him that he was on the agenda last meeting and he didn't realize it. So I thought I'd give him the courtesy of putting him first up on this agenda, but since he's not with us, we will do as I said, we'll move on to the public hearings and I will open a public hearing for Gerber Homes and BME Engineering representing the uh, Malus Malus Family Trust, owners of property at 3215 Daisy Way. Uh, they are seeking amended final subdivision approval uh, regarding the finished first floor elevation of the dwelling, which was constructed more than 12 inches higher than was approved. So uh, someone from B BME want to make the presentation? Uh, absolutely. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is James Kritikos. I'm with BME. Um, John with Gerber Homes is also here with me this evening. Um, as the chairman just kind of noted, we're looking to uh, obtain a approval on the finished grade of a house, which had deviated more than 12 inches from the uh, original approved plan. Uh, this is located at lot 56 of the Old Brookside subdivision. 
uh, the address of the property is 3215 Daisy Way. Um, pretty simple, what occurred out here is uh, basically uh, the homeowner, when the house is being built, elected to have a couple additional features, uh, additional course in the basement, as well as a uh, zero entry into the garage for ADA accessibility. Um, so between those two items, the uh, elevation of the house uh, came up a little bit. Uh, if you actually look at the original walkout elevation that was held, so the drainage off the rear of the property uh, is maintained, but the additional course in the basement, as well as the ADA accessibility, it causes the finished grade entry at the garage to be approximately two feet higher. Um, you know, the house is already completely built. The yards are stabilized. We're not proposing to do any work out here. Uh, we're just going through the uh, town required uh, approvals based on the you know deviation here just to make sure that everything is um, as the town requires. Um, so in general the, the drainage patterns are you know maintained uh, everything kind of flows um, like all these lots adjacent to it off to the east off the rear of the properties and then continues uh, down the slope there shown um, at the bottom of that image right there it's about a five on one um, all through town lands. Um, so that's kind of the, the summary on, on what occurred and you know why, why we're here this evening, but I'd be happy to, to answer any questions that the board might have. Hey, thanks, James. Uh, so really there's no construction plan. The only thing we're looking at here is the fact that the house was built two feet higher than it had originally been proposed. Correct. We're not proposing to do any disturbance or anything out there. So there's, no, you know, all the, the lawn stabilized, all the erosion control measures, um, you know, have been removed from the area, uh, grass is growing, um, and, you know, drainage is generally still conveyed kind of down the center of the house lines along the property line to, toward the rear of the lots. Okay, I'll open it up to the board. Board have any questions? Yeah, this, um, this is Gary Humes. <clears throat> So I was out there today um, just to, to take a look at it and see it what the, you know, the elevation changes really were. Um, and, and I will agree that I think my, my biggest concern was with, you know, water drainage um, to the corresponding lots, lot 55 on the, I don't know if that's north or south, whatever, what direction that is, but lot 55 and then lot 57. Um, and there is, between 56 and 55, there's a, I believe, a very noticeable and, def and defined swale um, that will take the water and run it to the, to the backside and then down, down the hill. Um, I did not see that between lot 56 and 57. And that was a kind of a concern to me. Um, with the, the way that the final grading was done. Um, a lot of that water to me looks as if it, it will come right off of uh, like lot 56 and kind of be pushed right into the backyard of lot 57. So I, I think that's, that's, at least to me, visually, um, when I looked at it and walked the, walked the property, um, I met the owner out there and, and um, and he, he was kind enough to, to enable me to walk the property with him. Um, and, and I did not see a noticeable swale between 56 and 57. Um, so that is a concern of mine, is that uh, I'm not sure there's proper um, stormwater, um, you know, place for, place for that water to, to, to go down um, toward the, toward the back of the property, and it's gonna it's gonna move more toward lot 57. So, I, I don't know if there's something you can do to address that. Over. James, care to respond? Uh, sure. Uh, so between uh, lot 56 and 57, uh, I believe the homeowner on lot 57 has constructed a uh, small wrought iron fence. Um, it's shown on the instrument survey that we prepared for lot 56. The other one of the other drawings. Um, so that was placed basically right on the property line there. Um, I did have a chance to talk with um, Gerber Holmes about this issue. Um, we were made aware of it. I believe uh, Bruce was able to get out there and, and also meet with the homeowner. Um, 
what we think we could do pretty simplistically is if this is a concern is to use a little bit of topsoil um, on lot 50 six so the property we're looking to get approval for and basically create kind of a small little um, berm if you will or wedge kind of along uh, right along the wrought iron fence to just help prevent the water from you know traveling through the fence and then kind of direct it back toward the uh, property line to the east kind of as it is originally intended. I believe there was some other construction on um, lot 57 as well in terms of a pool and a patio but um, we don't think that there's anything substantial that we couldn't take care of with a little bit of topsoil if this is a uh, drainage is a concern about, you know, some of it traversing the property line. Well, I, I certainly think that would, that would help. And I, I think that would be needed. I don't know if anybody, I don't know if any of the board members uh, went out there and took a look at it or anything and, and want to weigh in on that. But. Hey, Gary, it's Bob. I, I looked at it too, but my concern, my question really was then toward, did that increase in height uh, from the plan change the drainage at all? Was that affected to what was approved prior to? That's what I was trying to figure out how that, this variance per se would change the slope plan at all. I mean, in general, all these these houses are all walkouts. So, I mean, there's at least seven and a half to eight and a half, eight and a half feet of elevation change from the front to the rear of the house. Um, and then, like I mentioned, after that, the, the town owned lands slope out pretty um, substantially once you get off the property line. So it'd be kind of hard to do anything in this area um, that would drastically change the drainage patterns. I mean, the water is going to continue to flow toward the town owned lands and then and down the hill. Um, there may be some, you know, minor deviations. Obviously, the, the side yard swales are supposed to be cut right down the property lines. Um, so that way, they're kind of a shared feature between the homeowners. Um, you know, the construction of the wrought iron fence does prevent us from kind of redefining that swale right on the property line without, you know, removing it, grading it, and then reinstalling it. Uh, that's kind of why, you know, based on my conversations with Gerber Homes, we thought that this would be best resolved by just doing a little bit of topsoil to help, you know, kind of keep the, the drainage from lot 56 on 56. Thank you. Yes, board, this is Lance with MRB Group. I was just, you know, as part of our review of the application, we, we, we compare it to the original approval plans. And as mentioned by the design engineer, James, from being me, they, the plans were designed in a manner to have sheet flow between the two properties go towards the rear of the property. I believe all of the roof, and James, correct me if I'm wrong, is tied into the storm sewer system. Is that correct? The front downspouts are tied into the storm sewer system uh, because the, the it's a walkout. Down. Yep. Because of the walkout, the, the rear downspouts are disconnected. But generally at that point, you know, they're going to kind of sheet flow directly off the property unless there's been some other improvements, you know, after the original grading, i.e. a pool or, or patios or something that, you know, would have just been reviewed with code enforcement, I believe. Correct. So uh, as mentioned earlier by one of the board members, I think conveyance <clears throat> as shown as per the original approval plan to get the drainage to the rear of the property away from the neighboring property or any structures on the neighboring property would be something that I know that we had commented on. I think we got the property numbers incorrect. We said 55, we meant 57 um, in our comment letter, but that's, that was a concern of ours as well. And so I, I think the berming idea is an option that I don't have a problem with as long as it's stabilized in accordance of everything else and it's carried the full length of the property so that any runoff from your property makes it all the way to the rear property line and doesn't uh, transverse onto the neighboring side. I think that, or at least from my standpoint, is is what we would be looking for. Yeah, I agree. I, I, um, Chuck, I don't know if you want to open up yet or not, but um, I'd like to know. I, I, I believe the uh, property owners for 56, the lot in question, are on here. I'd like to know if they would be willing to, uh, you know, to have such a berm or or a uh, you know, change to their to that. To that to their uh, side yard there, um, if they'd be willing to have that have that done. Uh, I don't, 
can you hear me if sure. I talk? Yes. So, yes, thanks, Gary. Um, I, you know, Excuse personally, me, speaking, I, please? I'm sorry? Who's speaking, please? Oh, it's Gary Malice. I am uh, live at the property at 3215 Daisy Way. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I don't see, first of all, one, I don't see how that would work. Uh, I understand what you're saying, putting a little topsoil um, near the Roth iron fence, because quite frankly, uh, it's a see-through fence and it would go through the fence. I don't see how you would keep, keep the soil there, one. Two, it doesn't, I understand why what you said about the swale, it, it would be originally shared, but since the fence is there, then it's not necessarily an option. And, and I would agree with you there too. It probably is not an option because of that. And certainly want, wouldn't, would not want to see a fence removed. Yet, you, you know, I, one, I don't see how it would work. Two, I, I guess I could mow it. I don't know how I'd mow it, but you know, maybe there's a way to weed whack it or mow it. Three, I think it'd look maybe kind of a little funny, but uh, I'm just giving my thoughts and I don't see lacking a swale, uh, what, what's another option? I mean, isn't there drain tile that could have been put in, should have been put in to avoid something like that? Well, uh, let me, let me uh, chime in here. How long has the lot? How, how long has the lot been established and and as it is now? I mean, it's gone obviously through quite a few uh, storm events. Uh, how how does it drain out there? Does it seem to be working? I mean, is there an issue that we have? Are we trying to fix something that doesn't uh, that doesn't exist? Yeah, if you're asking me, I think it drains fine on our property, mm -hmm. but you've got as you said, you have 55 and 57. And the neighbor from 55 came over today. And he said he did not have any problems. And that was Luke and I, Luke and Sarah, and I'm blanking on his last name. But that's what he said. And I think Gary was there when the three of us talked about that. And I chatted with Sarah today, and we really didn't talk about you know, water, I didn't talk about water issues with, with Sarah at all. Um, so, so I don't know. I mean, I, but on our side, we don't have any, but, well, you know, on lot 56. As, as designed, it, the intent was to have it, have a side yard swale and have it drain toward the back, toward the park land. Uh, if for any reason it may be diverting on the lot 57 before it reaches the, the uh, back of the lot, um, and that's an issue with the people at lot 57, then maybe something should be done. But if they're not having an issue with it, and it's, uh, it's fine the way it is, uh, again, I'm referring to lot 57 now, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I think we're making a, you know, we're probably getting involved with something that we really don't have to. Yeah, well, you know, again, from my perspective, that I, I think you want to, you're, asking that of, of the owners of lot 56. Yes, well, you're 56, right? I'm sorry, lot lot 50, uh, the next lot, 57? Lot 57, yep. <clears throat> I'm sorry. That's all right. I believe they are online with us if you wanted to ask them. Oh, very good. Uh, may, may we go to uh, the owners of lot uh, 57 on Daisy Lane? Are you there? And We're let here. us know uh, how, how things are in your side and backyard. Hi, so if you would I'm just Sarah introduce Vassella. yourself. Please. Can you hear me? And you are? I'm Sarah Vassello, 3217 okay. Daisy Way. My husband Scott is here as well. Hello, folks. Um, hi. So we haven't initially noticed um, anything major in terms of, of water um, other than the side yard does now naturally get wet. Um, and a little more swampy than it did before the house was built because before the house was built, it was essentially a ditch next to our house. So everything just ran off. Um, so today, um, you know, our concern was a little bit elevated when um, we thought about long-term, any kind of storms um, that might come through. And, you know, the house is new relatively. It's been there eight months or so. Um, 
so we haven't experienced a lot of wet weather, especially this summer. So I guess our concern is long term. Um, we do notice it more wet and it stays more wet. Um, we tried to plant some grass and the seed did wash right off when we when we put the seed down. Um, so you know we don't have any glaring concerns right now, but certainly as we look out for the longevity of the home and the yard, um, we were concerned when we heard that we should be concerned about potentially a drain problem. The uh, problem you mentioned, uh, do you think, Sarah, that that's as a result of water coming off of Lot 56, or is it water coming off your own lot that just yeah, doesn't? You know, it, it was impossible to say. Bruce uh, from Gerber and I chatted about that today a little bit, and it, it really is impossible to say. I wish we had more time and data to give you more pattern information with weather. Um, there's really no way of knowing that. I think. It, it could be either way. We've had we had some really hard rain, so I mean, there's just I can't really speak to that. Do you feel like? Yeah, in an eight month period of time, there's really no way to determine what's come from that slope versus what's just come from the sky yeah. or our own yard. Because if we did put a diversion berm in on uh, lot 56, uh, that would keep the water from crossing the property line and kicking it back toward the park. But again, if, if, the, if what's happening on your property is not a result of that, that water flow, that runoff, it's more water coming off your own property, then uh, you know, it would be superfluous to put something in that's not really needed. So I guess that's, that, that's what I'm trying to get at and I'm just trying to bring this to some sort of conclusion. Hey Chuck, this is Bob, if I may. Sure. I I go right back to our what we're here for is to discuss why it was developed 12 inches higher, constructed 12 inches higher, and I still can't figure out why a 12 inch increase, and we're talking about swales that should have been done on the site plan a long time ago, and how a 12 inch increase uh, can change how sheet flow falls off the house and into other properties. So that's well, what I, I just can't put the two together. But I think it was a two foot increase. It was, oh, you no, know, that's why they're here is because it's over 12 inches. So uh, I believe it went from uh, 438 to 440 or 440 to 442 or something like that. I can't. Right, so how, how does a increase in height of a building change the sheet flow? That's what I'm trying to figure out uh, from the original site plan that we approved. It's, it's, it's the elevation of the first floor uh, is in, as, a, as a result, all the grading around it uh, could be different than what it would be if, it, if the first floor was two feet lower. So I, that's essentially, you know, and then when you raise the building up, you're, you're putting all the ground around it in a different uh, configuration and uh, that results in a different flow pattern if you're not careful. I think that's uh, that's that's why the the regulation is in the uh, on the books, and that's why we're here tonight. I, I, yeah, again, the the other answer answer to that question, I think it's a good question, but the other answer is that this is an amended site plan approval application, and uh, the planning board is entitled to look at any of the elements of the site plan. It's not just for this one issue. It's it's a re it's an entire review of the uh, newly submitted site plan. Um, I think Thank you do make a good a good point, but that's the other answer to that question. Thanks, Chris. And you know, this is not the first one we've had in uh, in this development. And you know, it was it was stated in the presentation that the. It was the desire to raise the ceiling in the basement and therefore knowing that that would occur, that uh, the, the elevation, the rafters, the floor joists would be higher. And uh, uh, at that point, I'm surprised the applicant, the, the builder did not come to the code enforcement department and say, hey, heads up, or here's a request we'd like to make to, to raise this building two feet and have it considered at that time rather than doing it after the fact. And again, I, this is the at least the second property in that development where uh, you know, we have a higher than two, uh, 
a, a two foot elevation increase over the uh, approved uh, plan. So that that's that's a procedure issue. It doesn't have to do with the what's happening on the uh, on the site itself as far as drainage. Uh, let's try to resolve this drainage things first, folks. Um, so uh, I have a question. Go Ryan. ahead. Go ahead. Ryan. <clears throat> So uh, on, on, on those notes, trying to put this all together, and while we have our Adler here, um, Chris, can I ask, like, what is the liability uh, into the future for the town and, and in specifically in response to the neighbor's comments about the longevity and the, and the issues that may arise into the future? Like... Can you answer that, please, Chris? <laughs> I sure, I sure can. The answer is the town doesn't have any liability here. Um, the town has an interest in creating as as good of a drainage situation as can be attained and re can be reasonably attained. Um, you know, at some point, the town engineer and the planning board signed off on the site plan as is. Uh, whether two feet of increase in elevation is causing drainage issues or not, I don't know. I'm not an engineer, but, um, you know, the town has an opportunity to maybe uh, make, you know, improve a, a drainage situation here um, in this approval or amended approval. Um, the town has no liability to make sure everybody has perfect drainage. The town has an obligation in site plan approval to make sure drainage is adequate. Okay, yeah, that, this is, this is Lance, ahead. whether I'm I'm bigger, and, and I think it's important to note that when we look at it, we, we compare the original approved sign plan that shows conveyance of drainage from the rear, from the front of the property being tied in and the sides of property being conveyed to the rear of the property. The new proposed or amended plan that's in violation of the approved plan does not show that. And that's what I think, at least from our perspective, that we're trying to correct. Whether it be by berm, whether it be by swale, that is what we're trying to correct, correct, is to provide that same conveyance that was originally approved onto this amended plan. So Lance, uh, I was gonna uh, defer to you anyway. Uh, it sounds like you're saying that what you're seeing here would not uh, would not serve the purpose of us being able to make a decision as to whether the change in grade would have a, uh, a an effect on the adjacent property owners, and uh, that we should have more information. Well, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is, from the original approved plan, there was a drainage swale that conveyed all water from between the two properties to the rear. It and as as shown now. It's no longer doing that. It's sheet flowing onto the neighbor property. So whether that's direct relation to the increase in height or whether or not the site was ever graded property to begin with, I can't answer that question. But if we wanted to, if we wanted to be, bring it as close as possible to being compliant with the original approved plan, there would need to be A, a swale put between the two properties or B, a, a berm of some sort, which we would ask to be shown on the plan so that we can verify if it's designed correctly to convey water from lot 56 to the rear of the property and away from the neighboring property as per our local, as per our, our codes and our site design criteria requires. Are we saying that the plan in front of us right now does show a side yard swale running to the rear of the property? So as the plan shows it, it's, it's a good concept or it's a good That good is plan. the original approved plan. Okay, well, and then, uh, and then on the, the one, right and then or the, the left? One, the one on the left is not, that's the, the amended one. And as you can see, you have conveyance starting at the 844 contour and then it softens up and then it starts going on to lot 57. And then when you look at the survey map. Okay, gotcha. It further defines that as being, you have your 840 contour and everything from there starts going to lot 57. Okay. So I guess what we're saying is uh, 
uh, this plan uh, is not uh, an, an amended plan that we can endorse, accept. Is that what we're, uh, we're saying, board? I would say I do not support the, the new plan that does not, that is, I would say the new amended plan is not in substantial compliance with the original plan. Uh, James, do you have any comments before we, uh, we uh, take, take a vote on this thing? Uh, my only statement would be that, you know, drainage intent is to just convey water from, you know, the area between the houses um, toward the rear of the property. I would, I would expect if you went around and looked at all the side yard swales of this entire subdivision, you would see this situation over and over again, where a little bit of drainage, uh, you know, goes on to the neighboring property. Um, I still think all the water is conveyed, you know, as the overall drainage intent of the subdivision, you know, off the rear of the property and eventually makes its way into the, you know, appropriate stormwater facility. Um, I would kind of in, you know, question, um, you know, lot 57, does the water pool does it pond when it rains or is it just wet for a period of time and then um you know eventually dries out like you know on any typical uh yard or lawn obviously it's going to be wet with a heavy rain uh, i'd be more concerned if you know there was a low spot or an area where the water was trapped um and and pooled regularly um, versus you know infiltrated into the ground um, because that could be a combination of things as to what could be being wet obviously if the soils were um, you know compacted or are more clays versus sand and, and you know that sort of nature um, so in general i think that the you know kind of the general intent of the drainage pattern for the subdivision is still not uh, regardless of you know if a little bit more yard is, is sheet flowed onto the adjacent property um, and then I would probably lean to, you know, the coordination with Gerber and then the homeowners for if, if you do want something resolved, whether it's a berm or something to, to better define that drainage swale. Well, I think that's your next step uh, to, uh, to meet with a homeowner and, and uh, Sarah and uh, Scott uh, out there and maybe uh, come up with a plan and bring it back to us as far as uh, what would work for uh, everybody concerned. I mean, um, again, there may be the other properties in the in the development that are similar in terms of how they drain. They don't all comply, but but this property is under a microscope. It was not built according to the original plan. We are looking to this plan now. We have to make sure that that uh, what occurred out there is uh, uh, does not cause any uh, concerns for the uh, budding neighbors, and that the lot will drain correctly. So. That being said, uh, I think uh, I guess we can I guess we can defer or table this uh, action on this rather than, than a denial. Uh, let's let's uh, I'll consider a motion to table action on this until uh, uh, BME Gerber and the two property owners can meet and come back with a plan that uh, is amenable to everyone concerned. That sound good? Yeah, I'll, I'll, this is Gary. I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay, I got a motion. Uh, do I have a second? Second. To uh, table action on this amended subdivision. Uh, any to further? What? To what date? I'm just kidding. Well, Change. till till the uh, till everybody can meet and a, an amended plan can be submitted. Uh, I'm certainly willing to consider this at the October 13th meeting, if you can get everything done. Uh, before that, that'd be fine, and uh, because I think that agenda is relatively light, so we can take it up then, or uh, otherwise it would go to October 27th. James, do you think you could get us revised plans uh, by, I guess it would be October 5th? Um, I could certainly put together a revised plan by that date, um, but what you see on the proposed design plan on the left here, that is the actual grading that we surveyed out there. So the proposed contours match exactly the conditions, um, you know, up to probably five feet outside our property line. Obviously, we didn't trespass onto, um, 
lot 55 or lot 57 to obtain any current survey there. So um, I, I do not know for sure that those houses were, you know, built to the final grade um, either. So um, that's not, yeah, we're, we're not asking for that. We need a, you to meet with those neighbors and come up with a plan that will allow for better kind of drainage. It's not a matter of what everybody else in the neighborhood has. <laughs> this, is, this is what we want to see. Right, but it, I guess my point is if you want an actual engineered document that might be different um, than just a meeting with the neighbor and coming up with a, a verbal agreement on a solution. Oh yeah, yes, I would want a written plan. Yeah, well, we, we want an amended plan showing the way that you're going to, if it involves some construction of a berm, if it involves uh, uh, the construction of a swale, whatever it takes, uh, you show that on a plan and we'll, uh, we'll act on it. Okay. All right. Okay. I have a motion and a second uh, to table action on this, this amended subdivision. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Chuck, what is the date, please, for the uh, amendment? Uh, we're shooting for, well, so, the, oh yeah, the uh, hearing will be continued to the uh, 13th of October. Okay. I, I, right. I would just like to make a comment to it. I, I'd like to be involved too in this as well as the homeowner. Well, you are the homeowner. Yes. Aren't you? Okay. Yeah. You're, you mentioned the neighbors. I just. Oh, know. okay. No, uh, the uh, lot 56 and lot 57. And if uh, the neighbors at lot 55 are available, they certainly may join in. Thank you so much. Okay. Very good. All right. Moving on to uh, our next public hearing. Uh, I will open a hearing for uh, the Venezia Group LLC, owners of uh, property on La Crosse Circle. Uh, they are seeking final subdivision approval for the uh, Fox Ridge uh, Phase 5B3. Uh, the, the illustrious Mr. No. Venezia, I assume, is in the house. Yeah, I'm here. This is Rocco. All right, Rocco. You and wanna... I, I, I... I know Anthony's here too, so I'll get it kicked off. So, so this is the last uh, phase of Fox Ridge. Uh, we're calling it 5B3. And Aaron has done the engineering. Um, so 5B1 up on Lake Breeze is completed. You guys signed off on that. That has five lots and that's the way that'll always be. We can't do anymore because it's a private drive. And then 5B2 was constructed about two years ago and now has um, four houses with another house under construction. 5B3, which we're asking for approval tonight, consists of 12 lots. Uh, call the stack will be at the end of the existing lacrosse going in about 200 feet and, and turning. Uh, it's a very large cul-de-sac. It's um, comparable to the one here on that I live on on Laura Lane and a couple others around town are this big. Um, the homes are set way back, um, kind of for aesthetics and also for um, uh, attaining walkouts on some of the lots. Uh, there's not a lot of grading that needs to be done. There is some grading. Um, the grading that's going to be completed will be more or less to build up the lots on the north side of the cul-de-sac, specifically lots five through nine. Uh, they drop off, and that what we want to do is build up the front so that we can build walkout houses and take all the rainwater and bring it out to the stormwater system uh, on Lacrosse Circle on the cul-de-sac. Um, we're extending the sewer and water approximately um, 240 feet from where it ends now. Uh, plans have, you know, um, all been submitted to all the agencies. Um, we are crossing the, the city water easement, which we have before. It's really deep. And we did get a comment back from the city I saw where they had no... Um, no concerns about what we were proposing. Um, 
we still own and maintain the, you know, the four bay, the sediment pond. Uh, once this project is done, completed, the last house is built and everything's back to lawns, we'll attempt to convey that to the HOA. Uh, but as of this point, that's still uh, owned, and, owned and controlled by by the Venezia, by Venezia group. And that's that lot right there with the, as you can see in the tag, it's Venezia group. That, that was a question on Lance's letter. So we, we still have our we still have our SWIP in effect. Uh, Lance has asked for Erin to update that. She's in the process of doing that. Uh, we did get Lance's letter. We went through it point by point. Uh, there was nothing in there that we couldn't do. Most of it was minor of nature. Uh, isn't that correct, Lance? There was really not a showstopper. No, I I, I appreciate it, Rocco. I did I did talk to Anthony today as well. Uh, and I'm, I'm not yep. trying to speak for Anthony. I'm just referencing that I did have a conversation with him. I, I agree. He, with did you, mention, he mentioned that. I don't. I didn't think I had anything in there that was a showstopper. But obviously, uh, I'm on one side of the table and you're on the other, so I, I don't. I don't know yeah. if you felt the same way, but that was my opinion. Um, I, I guess I, I felt like it was all genuine comments and needed to be addressed. And it was um, like I said, I thought they were minor in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, if I may, I guess one one minor point, Rocco, that I, as we're talking about drainage, um, both on the previous project and this one, something to consider, because I've seen it, we've seen it a lot on a lot of projects, not just by you, by, by everybody, where we have these drainage swales in the rear of the properties, and then ultimately these home buyers come in, and then they, they want to change the project. They want to amend their house and make it a little bit bigger or add a patio or a pool, and now our drainage swales, which in some instances are hugging the closer to the to the residents are now being either filled in due to the pool or the extension of a shed or something else and so i guess one of the questions that i i want to consider is is there a way for us to it does expand your grading and does require additional grading but if we could pull those swales further back to the rear of the property to give us maximum amount of yard space for these properties so that if they want to shed, if they put a pool, if they put patio in or anything else on their house, it doesn't impact that drainage swell that's conveying runoff away from them. We certainly can do that. We certainly can do that. Okay. I appreciate it. Was was that in your letter, Lance, that, that in, item? In a, in a roundabout way, yes. I, I think I was asking <clears> for <throat> if the drainage swales could be uh, can pulled further to the rear of the property okay. to, to allow extensions of houses or improvements to be made without impacting the drain as well. I, yeah, I just don't want to lose track of it. it. If we have to make it a condition, fine. If it's in your letter, then we don't have to. <laughs> yeah, it's in my letter. Just, okay. just, so, just so everybody's aware, um, um, what we're probably going to do is, you know, try to take those swales, looking at it a second time, and take it and bring it north to the south. Um, recently, we constructed a swale on the back end of, and it's, we got to add that to this drawing uh, to absorb the water that was some of the homes that were built. So I think that's a better move to get that water coming that way, because then it goes into the ponds. And then on top of that, if you do the calculations, Lance, mm -hmm. the area that that is just to the east side of those lots is the top of the mountain, the top of the hill. So the drainage area that comes towards those houses is very, very minuscule. There's, there's not a lot of drainage there. Sure. So, so if you do the calculations, I think the way Aaron's drawn it, it's a little, it looks a little excessive, but she's just trying to get it out of there, you know. That's fine. I just, I guess I don't necessarily have a problem with the drainage swales as much as I just want to make sure that you know they yep. they stay intact, right? For the, the long problem term. is if I go if I go too much further up the hill with the drainage swales, I get it. I, I get would, it. I'd be building them on top of the hill. I I understand that some of the properties okay. probably you can't do it. I I can understand yeah. that. Yep. 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 Eric, uh, one general question related to grading. Do uh, you see uh, the applicant having to come back for a site plan approval for each one of these lots, like we did over in the other street? 
No. Why would we want to do that? Uh, that, that that's my question. Uh, I know we did it over on uh, on Lake Breeze. That was a little bit different of a situation, Chuck, with the way that it was laid out. This is more of a larger subdivision, typical what you would see of a, a, a bigger subdivision where we just get the building permits to put them in, and they're put into this plan. Yeah. So as long as the detail is shown on this plan, and I'm not looking for more work for the planning board, but because uh, to go through 12 site plan approvals, yeah. Would, uh, Kind of no, as long as, as long as everything is built and designed and, and built to this this plan, um, it should be good to go. We shouldn't see any problems. And you don't raise the floor elevation. No. Okay. Yeah, I think that's important. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, I'll open it up to the board. Any questions? Uh, we've certainly seen Fox Ridge enough times and uh, we're going to hate to see it uh, come to an end, but. Uh, yeah, it's going to miss, you're going to miss it. But I got a couple uh, other cooking it I'll drive you crazy with. Okay, well, uh, one at a time, one at a time. Okay, board, yep. me board members, any uh, questions, concerns, comments? Uh, this, this is Gary. I guess I'll, I'll start. Um, I, I wasn't, I haven't been involved in the whole Fox Ridge stuff, everything, because this has been going on for a long, long time. It's before you were born. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> we, we, um, but, but in other past meetings, I know we've had some, uh, some interest from people that, are, that actually reside on Middle Cheshire. And I remember us talking about, and Rocco, I think I remember you kind of promising that, I believe I went, what I heard, that you were going to provide sewer capability to some of those property. So, uh, it, so how, how is that done? Was that going to so, be done through here? Because I, I, I read there's, there okay. was communications back and forth from the, the county sewer district. And in one of those, um, it says the district will not require providing sanitary sewer service to the adjoining parcels on Middle Cheshire Road. And I, I'm not trying to imply something here, but I'm just wondering, was that an out that we're, that now all of a sudden we're not going to be able to do that? Or is it being provided via another, another route or what's so, so a, a, a couple of things, a couple of things, Gary. Okay. Um, okay. First of all, that promise was never made by me. I always carried it over because it was a, but what that was that I called it zoning for dollars. Uh, Ron Brandt, when he was at the director of development made a deal with the developer, my predecessor to give him two extra lots in the subdivision in return for constructing that sewer line. The cost of that sewer line is forty or fifty thousand dollars, and the two lots certainly would have compensated him for the cost of constructing that. So that would have brought the total to one fifty seven. When I looked at it with my attorneys, they said that's really illegal because the original seeker was for one fifty five and we really couldn't go outside that seeker. So we were stuck with the 155. And now in fact, we're 152. So we're five lots below what we were. So having said that, you know, we kind of looked at it and then we went back to the county and the county decided they didn't want the offsite sewer, like out of district users. If they don't have a sewer line along a road, Gary, they have to build a road. And there's, there's just no way I want to build a road between two of my homeowners on a cul-de-sac to service a sewer line. That would be really, really put a burden on us. So having said that, we've removed it and we don't see why we would have to do it if the county's against it. And, you know, um, there's no direct benefit from us to do it. You know, eventually a sewer will come down Middle Cheshire and they can connect to that. And that's the way the county sees it. Well, Gary, uh, Gary uh, I, I, I certainly concur with your evaluation because I went through the same scratching in my head as to what happened out here. Because we, you and I, and I, you know, have sat in meetings where residents from Middle Cheshire have been there and they've asked, what about the sewer? What about the sewer? And I think we, we said that when this section was uh, finally approved that the sewer at least an easement and i'm not saying the line be constructed i think that's all that was promised the last we uh, went through this uh, this uh, uh, whole thing which was back in uh, 2014 then it was uh, re re uh, rethought of in 2019 
But in the meantime, uh, I guess Hank Rocco had asked the county to release the easement because the easement was on the preliminary plan. It was part of the preliminary plan. No, it was the county. It was the county that triggered that. The county got no. back to us. I think Hank was still alive. No, you and read the county the, says. You read the release, Go Frank Rocco, and it says that the releasee, which was uh, properties of Western New York, uh, which was Hank, had requested that the easement be vacated. And in return, the county oh. vacated it. So it, okay, was a, cool. it was a unilateral withdrawal or, or removal of the, of the easement without the town's knowledge, I, would, I would assume. I didn't know about it. I don't know if any town officials know about it, but I guess uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted Chris be part of this discussion. Uh, was that this was that released when all the other easements that we had were released with the water lines, the sewer lines? For there was an original plan that um, property development of Western New York had, and Scott Harder did, where the two roads connected, and they made us file all the easements before we constructed it. And I think as part of that release of the major easements, that was included in it because yeah, it was water, correct, sewer, yeah. and storm easements. The release occurred August 26, uh, 2014. Probably been at the same time that we got the water, water and storm sewer releases too for those that that particular design. Well, again, my question is: it was requested by Hank, and it was accepted by the county, but the town wasn't in the loop at all, even though our preliminary subdivision plan showed that easement uh, to be. Mm. on record as far as the preliminary approval. So here we are at final approval and the easement has gone away. So I guess that's that's the uh, deliberations we're in. And uh, again, Chris, call on you. So my question would be that the final overall subdivision plan show or have as a condition of approval this easement. No, or the construction the original plan, Chris? Correct. From the 80s? Whatever the fi the, ex the current final overall site plan. Yes. That was done in the 80s. That was done in the 80s. They showed 155 yeah. lots oh. and no, there was not, no, there was not an easement Fine. there. Rocco, hold on. Chris, are you talking about the, you're talking about like the prelim overall plan for showing you know, all the phases if I, uh, Yes, I believe that one did still have on the easement for it. And I think the conditions still call it out in its most recent form as having that easement. It's just, you know, it's been carried over for a number of years. No, okay. So the final plan, though, that's before the board tonight does not have that easement. Okay, before that could be approved, I would recommend that the town that the planning board verify that the county doesn't want it beyond Hank requesting it. Who knows what the county was thinking? If we just get a letter from the county sewer department saying, yeah, we're not interested. Wait. Don't we already have that? Chris, 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 we have that. Excuse me. Hold on, Rob. What do you have? We, we, we have, have a letter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have an email from Jack. Back in September. Yeah, that's that's actually, that's actually the one, Chris, that I was referring to when when I went through the documentation. Is there something that was uh, okay? Uh, and it says we don't want an easement between uh, Middle Cheshire. Yeah, it says in response to your inquiry, the district will not require providing sanitary sewer service to the adjoining parcels along Middle Cheshire Road. There it is, right there. Okay. Okay. Then I recommend that the planning board make note of that, that it's essentially releasing that condition of the original overall approval and subsequent approval based on, you know, factual evidence submitted by the applicant and by the county. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then what I'd like to do now is, is there anyone out in the audience? Uh, who lives on Middle Cheshire Road who would like to speak on this issue? Yeah. 
Uh, Jack Kellogg, raise your hand. Jack, are you there? I'm here. Can I be heard? Sure. Um, I'm Jack Kellogg. I live at 4851 Ashton Place. Um, Lot 89 seemed to run hill there across the property that presently owned by Dyer or Warner Brothers. And the whole problem is, if we develop this, 789 are going to start feeding the Ashton Creek, as I call it, that's immediately to my west. Uh, and if anything's done, property development, as far as the alleged continuation of Ashton, is going to make a further drainage problem. Um, I would think that um, if the retention pond was put in there on this development, somewhere around 789, a low spot, so that uh, a retention pond can be put in later on, if it is developed farther down the hill, uh, that it would be able to control it. Um, to, for this board to get an idea of the slope of the land, uh, all they have to do is take a look at the Ferris Hills that has roughly the same slope and has two retention ponds. And I think if uh, the eastern edge of seven, lot 789 were really taken into consideration somewhere between this development and the Ashton Creek, you're gonna to have to require two retention ponds. All right, thanks, Jack. I, I think uh, everything within the perimeter of this uh, plan, uh, for the most part, is controlled on the Fox Ridge property, right? That's correct. I'm, I, okay. I'm a little confused. I mean, Jack is talking about Ashton Place, and none yeah, of this water no. goes in. Yeah, okay, that, that was my question. None yeah. of this water no. goes in that direction. Okay. Uh, again, uh, we were talking about the sanitary sewer, and uh, Jack, I appreciate your comments, and that's something that certainly will be considered if and when development ever occurs as we get over the ridge here. But um, so there is no one on the uh, on the line or in the meeting that uh, is from Middle Cheshire Road. Uh, I don't see any ejected raised hands. Okay. Okay. Well then. Um, uh, I know they were notified of this meeting uh, through the public notice. So um, I guess there isn't as big a concern about the uh, sanitary sewer issue uh, as there was previously. And uh, I guess that being said, um, how does the board feel about uh, removing or uh, allowing for the removal of the uh, uh, the easement, the sanitary sewer easement from the, the back of the properties on Middle Cheshire. Well, not the removal because it's not shown, but never, not require an easement along that route. Is that, is that an agreement with the board? No, I, I can, I guess I can agree with that if that, that's the, the uh, by everybody. I just kind of in my gut, I just feel this is kind of like a big switch action going on here. And I don't mean that Rocco in any in a derogatory manner. I mean, I know you're. You're right, you're right, Gary. I, I mean, we we heard it. We I heard, heard you kind of say, hey, we're getting you sewer. We're, don't worry, we're going to get it. And yep. now it seems like it's gone. And it just is upsetting to me. That, that's all I'll say. You, you never heard that from me, though, is what I'm going to say. Oh, I, I thought I, I believe I did, but that's all right. Well, whatever. 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 We can agree to disagree. We don't, we, don't have to, we don't have to do that. Right. I mean, one other option I thought of that's been used uh, in, you know, in the past with plans I worked on would be to create a, a, a reservation, an easement reservation up there. Um, and it's not real in easement, it's nothing recorded, but it's just shown as the reservation on the plan that if and when uh, the property owners in the county want to go through the expense of putting in a sewer line that the, uh, uh, the area has at least been reserved for a sanitary sewer in the future. Is that a possibility, so Chris? It's a possibility, but it doesn't, it a, doesn't, because the, the property owners at that time won't be Rocco. They'll be oh, the no, homeowners, the two homeowners. 
who who will then have to agree or have full right to disagree to allow it even. So that being said, reason. the county can always, you know, forcibly take an easement. It's an expensive procedure, but the county really wants a sewer easement there. They can, can you know, execute condemnation proceedings and, you know, compensate the homeowners for the, for the land. Does not foreclose the possibility of ever having an easement there. Rocco, you were going to say something? So, so we have a similar situation in, in Bedford. At the end of Bedford, when they did the subdivision, they left a sewer easement, a reservation for a sewer easement to go across two of the lots at the end. It was a reservation. It's shown on a file map. It's filed in the county. But they never backed it up with an easement, a recorded easement to the county. And if you, if you were to pull that map, you would see that reservation. But there's no legal instrument, and according to the county, the only way they could get access to that easement, on, it's right on that between 4874 and 4875. That sewer would go up to the Van Isigan property. And just recently, we explored that, and the county said it's a dead end. So it's kind of the same thing where they were trying to, you know, force a sewer easement up to a, a, an existing, a, you know, an adjacent piece of property to 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 carry the sewer onward, you know. Um, so they, they did it, but now the two landowners refuse to do it, and the county don't have the, you know, the county don't have the stomach to go after it. So, so I see it there, it's right there. Yep. Yeah, actually, it's on the southern line. It's on. It's it's not the northern one because that stops. Uh, but it's that. You see it, thirty five foot utility easements of town of Candago and Candago Lake County sewer. But they never did it. They never they never deeded it. So it's a legal question if it really exists, if it's shown on the survey map, but on the file map, but and I'm sure it was a condition of approval. But but it's never been backed up with an easement. So it's kind of the same scenario. If you're gonna do an easement, you might as well do the easement, but the county don't have this the county don't really want an easement across there. They don't want a road back there and I surely don't wanna, you know, build a four hundred thousand dollar home and have a road right alongside of it to get to a sewer line that and it's gonna look terrible. It's a real burden for us. I guess the other question is if there was a sewer, where would it go? It would have to come out what between the two of the properties out to the road out to the cul de sac or out to the road? Or was it going the other yeah. direction? No, it was going to go between no, that, the houses and to the cul-de-sac and tie oh, okay. the into our main at the cul-de-sac. So you need an easement and, and then, between the lots. And then there. another fact. And then another fact, because of gravity, we can't even get a bunch. We can only get three of them. We can't even get we can't even get the majority of the houses. We can only get a few of them. Okay. Because, All right. You know, well. Let's uh, let's at least wrap the discussion up on the sanitary store. So uh, it, it does not show an easement. Uh, the easement was vacated. Uh, I guess that will uh, sh sh that shows on the final plan is not being there, which is correct. So uh, let's talk about any other items uh, the board may have. Uh, I know Jim Fletch. Excuse me. Go ahead. This is Ryan Stachak. Can we sidewalk easements, Rocco? Yeah, that Ryan, that's a comment on 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 Lance's, and we absolutely are going to put that there. Absolutely. Thank you. Did you forget that Ryan was going to ask and just forget to put him on the plan originally? We knew. We just wanted to see if he was paying attention. <laughs> uh, that's what I thought. Uh, related, I, how, about, not, how about street lights, Rocco? That was another one I kind of tried to sneak by us, but you got me. Put on. Okay, street lights, sidewalk easement. Yep. Somebody keeping track of these. Uh, they're, just for the record, they're, on, they're on Lance's letter. You know, just for the record, both of those comments are in my comment letter. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. As well as removing the street trees from the right of way and pulling the street trees outside of the right of way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, we got that. Uh, does the SWIP have to be updated or is it just good as is? 
Yeah, so what they would do is they would just amend the SWIP to make sure that it, it documents the improvements <laughs> that they're showing as 5B3. They, they've done it with 5B1 and with 5B2. It's, ba it's basically verbatim to that. It's just amended so that we have an updated SWIP for this section. That they're under, they're working under the existing NOI for the overall Fox Ridge. The stormwater facility has yep. already been sized to handle the flow from this site and actually with more lots than what they're proposing now. Um, all the fronts of the lots are going to be tied into the closed storm sewer system, which would be conveyed to the stormwater facility. We are requesting both in our comment letter and as a condition for your consideration, as with previous approvals of uh, Fox Ridge, that the facility um, be, be document uh, the stormwater management facility depth and capacity be documented and forwarded to the town uh, prior to the issuance of permits. And then ultimately so for... Trend. I'm sorry. Uh, Lance, we just did that for 5B1, so there's a there's a updated file showing all those elevations on file Perfect. from June. Okay. Eric, Eric has that. Okay. Lance, uh, shouldn't that maybe be done at the end of the project? Well, it, so yes, yes and no. So I wasn't sure if it was done with the previous project or not, so I put it on here. But I just made a note that if we could do it at the end, because ultimately at the end, prior to closing out, as with any project in the town, we get record drawings, and the town's going to want to know that that facility has the depth to handle the site going forward. So if we make that note, instead of saying prior to the issuance of building mints, prior to the issuance of the final CFO in closing out of the project. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, again, uh, Bob, you have any questions? Uh, Karen? No. Ryan? Ryan, got any sidewalks? Ryan, anything else? Yeah, I'm just trying to trying to dot no. the I's and cross the T's here since this is sort of the closeout of Fox Ridge. Yeah, we do we really think the closeout of Fox Ridge? Do we really, do we really think? Yes, Ryan, we really think it this time. <laughs> Come on, Anthony, let's get these things in the ground. Um, I, you know, I, I like the layout. I think it fits for that community. Um, you know, on the other side, it, it kind of conserves the property on the west side of that hill where that big parcel is that we saw a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah. This has to be, you know, the, 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 the stormwater pond is right there. We're utilizing that. It's an existing stormwater structure. This seems like it's ready to roll and hit the road. I don't see why we would, uh, you know, the, 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 the sewer issue is a little disappointing. I don't understand how the county can have, I, 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 I would say I don't think that the county's decision to remove the easement is reflecting my opinion about it. I, I feel like I know the story and I, I think I sit with Gary and Chuck on this one. I, I, I don't think it's a deal breaker for this and I support this and, I, and, and I'm ready to move forward. Well, let me make clear, you're not obligated. The county's opinion is not binding on the planning board. <laughs> if the planning board wants a sewer easement there, the planning board has full authority to require a sewer easement, regardless of what the county does. My, my question is that I'm left with not quite knowing if there's closure with your HOA there. What do you mean closure with the HOA? Well, if I remember the hearings that we had, um, I remember the, um, that the Fox Ridge folks had a lot of um, concerns about drainage. But did that all get uh, signed off? And because I, I just missed the interim step then. If, if they have concerns about drainage, where are they right now? I, I don't know. Okay. You know? So it got, it, in other words, you did uh, resolve it with them. I, we must have because they're not here. So I, I don't, I don't it, see any of them in a meeting unless, unless they're not staying. The uh, this, this is Brian Mater. Um, I'm the president of the HOA. So we're here. Good. Oh, wow. you that one. <laughs> okay, I was just getting ready to go back out to the public. Hang on, Brian, and see if you have any. If you have any comments, just hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, there was just a comment that nobody was from um, was from the HOA, so I thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> Thank you. Does he does he have a comment, or is he just saying that he is here and he doesn't have a comment? I do have a comment, but I'll wait until you ask for it. 
Okay. Stand by. Stand by. Uh, Jim Fletcher had uh, quite a, a couple issues to go over. You saw that, uh, uh, Rocco, I saw that yeah. Anthony. Okay. Yeah. All related mostly that's to not, water. That's, none of those are a problem. Uh, the the cul-de-sac, uh, although it's it's very large, which is good, and it has a an island in the middle, which is good, uh, with all those lots fronting on that cul-de-sac. Uh, if, if two people had a party the same night, I don't know where the on-street parking would be. Oh. But uh, uh, the the good the news it it been well they can't park. Yeah, they might if they. If they well, that's what they do on Laurel, on Laurel Lane. We have block parties, and there's like 30 cars in there. Now, up on, up on the not, grass? Yeah, yeah, right yeah, there, so. yeah. They do. Well, that, that's not the intent. I, I see it more for Jim's benefit in terms of a place to put the snow when he plows that, uh, right. that big big bubble. Uh, but People again, find a way. You'll be able, they'll be able to, I mean, with the size of that cul-de-sac, they'll be able to have some quite a bit of on-street parking and room to get around well and the driveways are long enough too yeah. that you can park uh on the driveways and uh, i guess first man in last man out in the driveway True. okay um uh, okay yep this is gary a little bit about uh, excuse me another question about that uh the cul-de-sac there and i'm from Jim fletcher's no removal point of view uh, it, from what I see on the drawings, and I'm just questioning here, it looks like there's going to be a, is there a proposed uh, a gutter both on the interior as well as the exterior diameter of that cul-de-sac? I, 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 Eric, I need to see the plan. I'm not looking at the plan. I think there is. I think it's a mountable. It looks to me, it looks, it looks to me like there is. It's a mountable uh, curb or gutter. Yeah, and, and so I guess that was just a little, is that, I don't know, I guess I'd have to, I'm not an expert on this, but would snow plow equipment, if, if that's where Jim would put a lot of the snow is push it into the interior of that thing, would that, would that damage I, that? No, to be honest with you, when he plows our street, he, he, he goes right around the circle and pushes it to the outside, because that's how the plow is set up. Just like they're plowing a road, they just, you know, it goes to the outside. Yeah. Yeah, to, to, to answer your question, it, it won't be any different than regular street plowing with the gutter on the inside. That's wing will yeah. hit it or it won't hit it, you know? So I'll help, I'll get a driver. Uh, okay, all right. I, yeah, that was the only only other, other little thing I saw that I wanted to ask about. Uh, Eric, uh, you sent this to the uh, county planning board, but uh, they did not respond, is that correct? Okay, let the record, sh let the record show uh, that. Uh, ECB, did they not meet in time to review this? They provided comments. Excuse or me? they reviewed it, but. Yeah, I didn't have the minutes of their meeting of the third. Stormwater retention filtration measures. Okay, very well. Cheshire Fire did not respond. We did get a, a no comment from the city of Canadagua. Uh, other than that, let's talk about MRV. All right, uh, Brian, if you're still out there, we'll uh, hear what you have to say. You have any comments on this application? Um, just a few questions. Um, one is the island circle, whatever you call it itself. How will that be finished? Will that be graded and seeded, or what's what's the plan? Grass. Yeah, graded, graded, yeah. But grass. not seeded. Grass, yes. graded It'll and be grass. seeded. It'll be it seeded says on there, proposed grass island. Yes, it's it's on the plan. And your okay. next question. Yeah, oh, okay, I I see that now. Okay, okay. And your next um, question, Brian, is who's going to maintain it, right? Well, no, the HOA will. The, the HOA will maintain that once we, uh, you know, we, we get title to that land, mm -hmm. but. Um, well, that'll you, be in the right what? way. That'll be the town's land, but it'll yeah, be, it'll, say. it'll be it won't be title to the town to the to the HOA. 
I think you get a break it's on typically, that. Typically, it's exactly like the other cul-de-sacs. The center of the cul-de-sac is not, but it's, you know, not all of them. I'm, I'm sorry, say, say that again. I, there was a couple people talking and I didn't catch it. Are they, do we, I guess. So, so Brian, I'm assuming from what you're telling us that right now, the HOA cuts the grass in the center island. Well, that's what we do yeah. in the whole HOA, yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh -huh. I, we, the, the center will but be I, dedicated I, I, to the HOA, yeah. But I think, I think, I think it's just kind of an agreement between you and the town, the highway department, that you take care of it because they actually, it's been dedicated to them. It's part of their roach infrastructure. Is it? Okay, I guess I wasn't aware of that. Um, I mean, yeah, we, do have, we, we do have landscaping on all Is of them. Is it the HOA? That, oh, I, I, I stand corrected, Brian. Yeah, I it'll, stand it, then it'll, it'll be the same type of cul-de-sac system that, well, whatever the yeah. other phases have had, it'll yeah. be dedicated to the HOA in the end. Once it's okay. correct and everything, so, and then okay. the town takes over dedication, and that same yep. process will be dedicated to the HOA transfer to them okay. as part of the project it'll, it'll be transferred to hoa yeah okay i didn't right, know they that did was, that okay yeah um thank you now um all of our uh i'll call them circles or common areas are landscaped and um you know what i'm asking is that the i'll say developer i don't know if it's rocco or gerber whoever um that we have an we have an allocation uh so that we can landscape that from allocation us? of funds i, from, I don't from know from from somebody so i mean so, i just don't want i mean it to, it to be consistent with the rest of the hoa um we need to do some landscaping on that so Br okay, brian so the one thing i will bring up is over the past 10 years that developers have owned this they've been paying into the hoa pocket without ever having any benefit there's been 28 lots that have always had an hoa fee that has been divvied to the hoa so over the last i think it's been about 150 dollars a lot for an undeveloped lot as as the town as the hoa calls it and that's you know a lot around it's been about two thousand to three thousand dollars a year for the last 10 years that the 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 developer that has owned this five three area has been paying to the hoa but there hasn't really been much use. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Who's, who's, who's has, speaking? Who's who is speaking now? This is this is Anthony Venezia. I'm the developer. Uh, you're okay. Um, I I don't know that that's that really is the same question or the same subject is needing an allocation of funds to let, let landscape what's going to become common areas. So um, so. Uh, I think what he's driving a point home is that, you know, besides forty thousand dollars that was given to the HOA from Hank Eifer, we put in another twenty thousand since we owned it, and actually so, legally we only own one parcel and we're being billed for twenty eight. And just to be well, good, we've been neighbors, down that we've been, road. We've been down that road a hundred times. We don't need to revisit to that one now. Right. So we we, 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 we have well, the next group will not be allowing an allocation for any kind of landscaping at this point. Correct. We're going to grass the island and be done with it. We're going to put grass on the island and well, be done with it. I'm, again, I well, hang on, hang on. I, I, I'm not seeing people, excuse so I don't me, know everybody. who's talking. Excuse Brian, me. Quiet, Brian. everybody. No, none of the people talking have the authority to make the decision. It's a planning board decision. If the planning board wants to insist that it be landscaped prior to dedication, that's something the planning board can do. The planning board doesn't have the authority to require a financial contribution so that the HOA can, debit, uh, can landscape it itself. Okay. I'm sorry, if I may, this is Lance with MRB Group. Before we even get down the road of landscaping on the utility plan, you're gonna see that that island is full of easements and utilities. And Correct. I can assure you Correct. that neither the county sewer district or Jim are going to allow any kind of trees or plantings inside of their easement area. So I don't, I don't believe this island is going to be able to be landscaped. Okay. Is that is that different from the other islands? Because I think there's, in some of the other islands, there are some easements as well, but I certainly don't know the details of that. 
I can't speak to previous sections or whether or not that landscaping was authorized by the town or not. I can just tell you that the town does not require, or excuse me, does not allow landscaping or plantings inside their easements. And then the county is likewise not going to allow that. Okay. 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 To finalize this issue, I, I think on behalf of the board, I think uh, if, if it's okay with the board, I will state that the island will be, will be grassed and seeded and stabilized and that will be it. It will be the, uh, I guess, part of the ownership or the HOA, uh, similar to the other islands in terms of their ownership. And uh, we'll leave it at that. You agree, uh, board members? Well, oh, okay. I'll agree. I agree with that. Okay. All right. I'm fine with that. Okay, Brian, do you have anything else you'd like to bring up? I do. W once the whole thing is done and the, uh, and this is the retention pen now, you know, I understand that like the other uh, retention pens, the land is owned by the uh, HOA, although the town maintains the pens, but it gets back to, um, I'll use the word landscaping again. I'm t of course, I'm talking about the one there on, on West Ridge is when that's turned over that uh, at a minimum, you know, should be graded and seeded just like this island. Doesn't that, uh, oh. doesn't that basin exist and isn't it being used already for the... Uh, yeah, it's for, a pond. It's got to stay a pond, Chuck. It can't be graded. It, it's no. got to stay a pond. No. It's got to stay I'm like talking about, I'm talking about at, at West, right at the, the, the edge, call it the curb of West Ridge, that land which Rocco still owns is not being maintained. It's just weeds and grass and stuff. Okay, but we it, can't have but that it, there forever. We need to make that look kind of consistent with how the whole, you know, the development looks, yeah, not we, just a we, bunch of weeds. We can mow that down and get it back to being more manicured area in the front there, along the frontage. But the pond itself has to stay, and it's kind of ugly, to be honest with you. But it's, well, no, it's the, the, be pond, the pond has to stay. I'm not talking about the pond. I'm talking about 10, 15 feet or whatever between the road towards the pond is to have that look halfway decent as opposed to a bunch of weeds like it is right now. I think somebody mowed, somebody mowed it. I have no idea who. We, the HOA does not because we don't own the property. We don't know who mowed it. I think the town mowed Whatever it. You're ready. It's the same application that started at 730. I mean... <laughs> Okay, oh, wait a minute, Joe. we got too many people talking. Uh, all right, so that's an existing lot that's part of this sub. It's not part of the subdivision, but it's an no. accessory to the subdivision in terms of that's where the uh, stormwater will go. Yes. Uh, that, that I, I, I don't see where there's anything that the planning board should require above and beyond what exists there currently. Uh, we just want to make sure that it has the capacity to uh, handle the stormwater runoff uh, from the uh, improved development uh, up the hill in 5B. So I think that's, that's the only obligation we have. Uh, and th that was part of our engineer's uh, comment letter. And if you're willing to, or if it's already been mowed, uh, Rocco, that's between you and the HOA. I don't think, uh, you know, the town's getting involved with this in any way. Chuck, I'll just okay. I'll just put this out there. I'll I'll keep it maintained in mode until it's dedicated. That area that he's talking about, we'll make sure that it's it's kept a little bit nicer than it has been in the past. Okay. I can do that. Thank you, Anthony. Yep. It'll help. It'll help you market the property across the street. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody uh, else out there in virtual land who would like to speak on this application before I close the hearing? Okay, uh, with no one speaking up, uh, we will move on. Is the board ready to, uh, to move? Uh, if you, uh, are we dealing with a seeker or we're not, I guess? The seeker's done, right? Correct. Seeker was done as part of the original approval of Fox Ridge, and therefore we don't have to mess with it. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the resolution regarding the subdivision.
Okay, the hearing is closed, John. So we're moving on to the uh, deliberations uh, on the uh, action. Okay. Did we, uh, we have, pick up a couple of those? Have a uh, let's for amended prelim. Is that right, Lance? I'm sorry. Say that again, Eric. We don't have a resolution for an amended prelim approval. Uh, I, let me ask we, this question: Do we do we need one? I thought that I thought the last amended preliminary overall approval had three phases in matching this it alignment. It, it did, but I think it also had that condition about the sewer. I'm okay if you add it as a condition. The, an explanation in the condition section that the planning board has received information from the county that they don't want this sewer easement uh, and is thus, you know, okay with not having it. That'll speed things along, I think. Okay. Some kind of an acknowledgement statement. Ex exactly. In case somebody, you know, two years from now says, when Rock was going for his last building permit, says, wait a minute, you were supposed to put this easement in there. The planning board considered it, received new information, and now is, uh, you know, is okay with seeing it removed. And, and I would recommend that also be in the findings. Yep. You get a great. Okay. Uh, would someone, uh, let's uh, take a look real quick at the conditions before we act on it. Sure. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, just sure. identify for you that condition number 11 that states regarding the existing depth and capacity, we spoke on it earlier. I would recommend that be amended, that the depth and capacity be verified at the end of the project. So it would be provided prior to the issuance of the final C of O in closing out of the project. Or, uh, well, not that would be no. like a de dedication of the streets, but that could occur before the final C of O. Okay. That would be my suggestion, but that's up to the board. Uh, um, that's fine. That sounds then, good to me. And then we can remove number 13 because that has already occurred. That's the transferring over to Venenzi Group LLC. Okay. <clears throat> that's the one that needs to be mowed. Okay. Correct. And then we're going to keep, yeah. we're going to keep the following two, the last two that's regarding um, a stormwater maintenance agreement, and then ultimately transferring over um, the stormwater facility property to the HOA at the final C of O. And then I'm offering, based on dialogue with Fletcher, uh, the Venenzias today, and also Eric, uh, as you recall, Fox Ridge 5B2, the section that leads up to this section, um, the roadway and infrastructure hasn't not yet been dedicated. And so what we're, what we're suggesting for your consideration is that the dedication of the roadway and infrastructure for a lot for section 5B2 be completed and accepted by the town board prior to issuance of permits for 5B3. Um, at this point, it's my understanding based on an email received from Jim Fletcher today that the roadway has been repaired in accordance of his requirements and it meets his requirements. Um, and so that he's willing to allow the town to move forward with acceptance of dedication of that, which is what took so long. That's, that's what prevented the town from taking acceptance of it earlier was the repair of the road. So as of today, I got an email from Jim stating that he's willing to move forward with acceptance of a road. And so if we had that condition on here, the dedication, dedication includes a number of things to be provided. It requires record drawings. It requires a maintenance bond. It requires the easement paperwork and the deed paperwork and the legal paperwork to be provided to the town. And so I'm saying if that could be done and be required prior to the issuance of permits for 5B3, uh, I think that would be appropriate. Lance, are you talking about building permits or like general site development permits to start putting the road in? Um, I guess I'll leave that up to the town to decide on. Uh, I, I obviously want dedication to, to occur sooner than later. Uh, I think it's important. I think there's liability issues there. Um, so I guess my initial thought is prior to the issuance of any permits, but if there's reasons why that can't be done and the board wants to allow that, that's up to them. So Eric, or not Eric, but Lance, my only concern is that sometimes that paperwork got to go back to two or three different attorneys, back mm -hmm. to the town board, and 
because we're kind of late in the year here, we're going to want to get started with at least moving, you know, the soil. So what we would like to do is if we could do it for the building permits, it would really be helpful. Okay. If I could just appeal to the board for that. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't have a problem with it. I just, I do feel it's important that we, we process this as soon as we can. And, and to be fair to Rocco and Anthony and those guys, I know that Jim had asked for that road to be repaired and it got, they got right on it and took care of it and addressed it. So I, I commend, I, I meant, I commend them for that. So thank you. So it, it was unfortunate that it happened. We just had a bad contractor, didn't put enough down and it was embarrassing for us, but you know, we, it worked out, we got it done. Okay, how about we make it uh, conditional upon building permits? We're think that's that would be wonderful. That'd be wonderful. Okay. Though. All right. I have one uh, other question. I have one other question. Well, uh, what? Okay. We haven't. So, we so, don't have. A, we don't have a motion yet. You you can ask the question, Rocco. Go ahead. I have one other question. So so I'm I've I've looked at the other cul-de-sacs in in Fox Ridge, and they all have one light on them. Is that going to be sufficient that we add one light on the cul-de-sac? We have one about, we're putting in one right now about 150 feet south of the end right now. And then if we put one more, that'll give us one and that'll be, that'll be um, comparable to the other sections of the subdivision. Okay, what, uh, why don't you show it on your uh, revised plan and cause that'll be submitted to, okay. to Lance okay. and agree. Chris and Jim to look at. And if they're okay, okay. with it, we're okay with it. Fair enough. All right. Fair uh, enough. So I think we uh, have a resolution before us. Does someone want to make a motion? Hey, Chuck, this is Bob. I'll make the motion if I see the uh, limitation. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Eric. Now make a motion to accept uh, Venencia Group LLC Fox Ridge Division Phase 5 Bravi uh, at Lacrosse Circle CPN 20 zero five eight with Lance uh, I believe we're deleting number 11 uh, and we're going to have a total of 14 is that correct Lance so we're deleting number 13 Let's see 13 right. yep and then we mean but amending 11 and amending 11 and then we added two one is the dedication that would be 15 and then 16 is the statement that Chris Nadler, the town planning board and town attorney um, suggested that we add in regarding referencing and acknowledgement of the sewer easement. Copy. So then with the 16. Okay, very good. Do I have a second? I'll second that. This is Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, I have a motion by Bob, second by Ryan. All in favor? Question, Aye. Chuck. Oh, uh, excuse me. Oh, hold on. Stand by. Stand by. Let Sorry, sorry about this. Lance, uh, 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 park and rec fees included? Yes. Yeah, so that was that was voted, that was a condition as part of the original preliminary overall and was Making carried sure. forward as part of all the amendments. So, yes. Thank you. Okay, ready to move on? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Not opposed. Okay. God bless Fox Ridge. <laughs> hey, Chuck. God bless Fox Ridge. Chuck, real quick. I know Jim Fahey jumped on a little bit later than you. Um, we're going to offer him that courtesy, and I don't know if you still were up to doing that. Uh, sure, we can do that before we uh, – and I apologize to the applicants that are uh, ahead of us, but uh, let's jump back. We have a real quick issue to talk about with uh, Jim Fahey and I'm going to jump off. Thank, th thanks, everybody. Good night, Rocco. Good night. Uh, we're going to jump back to uh, on the other businesses required, uh, revisiting uh, Jim Fahey and Venezia representing uh, a property at 4691 North Menteith. Um, uh, the seeking amendment to the planning board's decision regarding the sanitary or the septic system location as to uh, our condition as to uh, what has to be done prior to the uh, the signing of the plans. Uh, Jim, are you uh, you there and you want to make your case real quick? Yes, thank you. I appreciate the time and I'll, I'll be very brief because I know you guys have a half of a long night still ahead of you. Um, I My summary back to the board following your approval um, after our presentation on July 28th, uh, basically the 
the requirement for the signatures on the septic system by both the DOH and, and Tyler Oley, the, the county watershed inspector, um, is unfairly um, keeping our clients from starting their project in, a, in I feel, a reasonable time. Um, I understand the reasoning behind this originally, um, and it made sense after the presentation, but the, the holdup, um, and Bill Grove brought this to light afterwards, that the typical process from the DOH is to take up to 14 weeks to review and provide signatures um, after their plan has been submitted. So um, a full septic plan has been designed and has been presented, brought, shown to the town, uh, as you're showing on your screen right now, uh, including the proposed grading in that steep slope area. So really, the, in our discussions the night we presented, I think the two key points, uh, Tyler cautioned the board in an early uh, conversation or, or email to the, the town to, not to approve a site plan prior to having a septic system reviewed. And when I spoke to Tyler uh, in the middle of August, he said, he goes, Jim, I wrote that letter before I saw anything. He goes, since then I've seen concept plans and I've given Bill um, my the feeling that I'm, I'm good with the direction of this. So that's really been put to sleep and talking to Bill on a number of occasions he feels extremely confident, and I think Bill may be with us here this evening, uh, that this plan has been thought through uh, thoroughly and that it's not going to be a problem getting this approved. So our what we're hoping the board would do is to take the condition of the signatures off of this. Um, the addition of the septic to the site plan is perfectly acceptable, um, along with your other conditions but maybe the condition of signatures to be prior to C of O for the house. So get the site plan put together with the grading and the septic as shown in Bill's plans, but holding us up for the signatures is, is really, I think, unfairly um, holding up our clients from starting it. We're gonna basically lose the construction season. Um, so that, that's my argument. Okay. Where, uh, where, Jim or Bill, are you in the process as far as getting the, uh, have you submitted the formal or the final or the detailed plans to uh, Tyler and uh, DOH? Bill, are you with us? He doesn't appear to be. Okay, um, my understanding, and this is my understanding, so I can't confirm this, uh, is that Bill sent these out to the, on the 28th, to uh, not only the county, but to the DOH. So if you have information that's contrary to that, it's not, not to my knowledge. He sent an email out saying he would, that was, it, he would be submitting it on the 28th of August. No, I just wanted to make sure that the process was started and ongoing. And uh, because I think at the time when we made the original, the original uh, motion, uh, it was just, it was conceptual. It was going to go to DOH. It hadn't been there yet. He hadn't finalized the plans. And based on that information, I think we were concerned that what if things changed in the review of the DOH and Tyler's ultimate uh, review, uh, and it would affect both the system itself and possibly its location as well as the grading. I think that was concern, the concern of the board, if I'm speaking for the board. Uh, if we're further down the road now, in terms of uh, more assurance that this plan will be approved as drawn or as shown, um, I guess that's why you're asking for us to consider a, an amendment to our decision. Exactly. How's the board feel? Well, I hate okay. to lose a construction season over a technicality. It doesn't sound like it's substantive. Did you hear me? They yeah. can't. Oh. They can't move in until they get the DOH approval. So, if the DOH rejects their submission, they're still gonna they're gonna have to redesign it and submit it again, submit mm. a new plan. So, it's not like they're gonna be living there without adequate waste disposal. Right. 
Well, I think, Chris, uh, I know you weren't sitting in on those meetings, but I think our concern was that the grading is very uh, it's concerning here also over top the septic system because it's a mm -hmm. steep slope. And I think oh. if, if, if something changed in the design, it would affect the grading okay. and it would have to, the plan would have to, the actual site plan would have to be revised. And I think that was the concern. So rather than get into a revised plan in the future, again, knowing that it was just sort of preliminarily looked at and preliminarily uh, accepted. Uh, if we're further down the road in terms of having uh, the details being submitted and the, uh, the DOH is now into the review of this thing and I, you said it's gonna take 14 weeks so that you're looking at uh, three months. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a long it, time. Right, and, it, and I think in, in, in all respect to the board, you, you had nothing in front of you at that time. I fully understand your decision we're now looking at a final plan and we actually have room in there for an expansion as Bill has shown. So if the DOH comes back and wants something to be expanded in a minor way, Bill has covered himself in his design. He actually shows you that extra space in his, uh, you, you see he has one more bench in order to work with. Um, and we talked we talk that all through. So we're at a whole different place here today than we were in the 28th of July. Where are you, uh, where are you Jim, as far as drawing down a uh, building permit? Uh, plans are done. I'm waiting. Okay. Um, I, I haven't submitted anything because of this um, condition. Okay. Uh, Mr. I mean, Chairman of the board, if I may, this is Lance from my B group. I just, I think it's important just for the record to reference why the board originally, I know there's been a lot of talk as to some of the reasons why, but I think it's important to reference specifically why um, typically we get letters from their office stating they've received something which you've already referenced to the board that they had not received at that time. And so the specific comment received from that office when this application was before the board and the reason for that condition, I believe, is because they wrote and said, this office has not yet received plans for on-site wastewater systems for the proposed residents. This office cautions the town in granting any approvals before it has demonstrated that the site can support an on-site system that serves the proposed resident. Again, I'm not suggesting one way or another. I just think it's important to read into the record why at that time the board added that condition as, as it is. Understood, Lance, and I think I said that at the beginning here, and, it, uh, and I also spoke to Tyler and sent me an email explaining why he made that comment. He had yet to see anything. After seeing you. Bill's concept, he's in good shape. So yeah, I hear you. I think what we did, we did right at the yep. time based on the information we had. So now it's, uh, it's a month or so later. So let's uh, consider what we have in front of us now. Uh, is the board willing to uh, consider an amendment to uh, of this condition to make it subject to a certificate of occupancy rather than signature signing of the plans. Uh, this is Bob with the new uh, information we have in front of us for sure. Yep. Okay. Anybody uh, have any, uh, dis anybody disagree with that consideration? Okay. Brian, uh, you were going to say something. Brian? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I was going to say we're supportive as long as what Brian said that if for some reason we get a big, huge change that the DOH for South Street says that this is not appropriate, that the, I'm hearing that the, you know, the, the applicant is accepting responsibility for that also, that we're not going to, I would just make clear that we should not change the site plan because DOH says this isn't appropriate, so we're going to cut some corners and then manipulate the whole site plan. I'm not hearing that. So I'm supportive of moving forward as soon as possible. Well, and if that would occur, Ryan, uh, he would have to come back with an amended plan and go through that process, which would take even more time. So he is, he is, you know, he is doing it at his own risk and uh, uh, assuming that he can get that approval, and he, he can go ahead at least to draw down his building permits and his construction permits and get underway out there. So uh, I will make a motion that we amend that condition to uh, 
uh, how do we read that in, in, in lieu of uh, the signing of the record, or the signing of the plans, that it be conditional upon the uh, certificate of, that the certificate of occupancy uh, be held up until the approval is made. I second your motion. I'm glad you understood it. I did. Yeah. <laughs> and for, for the record, it's it's condition number six as previously approved that we're amending. Okay. Yeah, it's contingent on the C of O, right? Now right. you tell. Now you tell. Me. Okay. All right. So uh, that's the uh, the amend. We're amending condition number six of the original approval. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Good luck, Jim. Good luck, Anthony. Thank you very much. We appreciate the time tonight. Okay. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. Take care. All right, we'll go back and with our apologies, go back to uh, the agenda. Uh, Bernal Reif, uh, representing uh, Bernie Lyman, Lehman, uh, owner of property at 4977 <laughs> Station House Drive, uh, seeking a single stage site plan approval for landscaping and regrading within the uh, RLD. I think there's also a structure retaining wall involved. So uh, Mr. Reif, I think you're uh, on the line. Yes, my name is Bernal Reif. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello, Bernal. Hi. So, concerning Station House Drive, uh, on the south side of the property, between Station House and Walnut Cove, uh, there's a large backyard. What we'd like to do on that side is, originally, we had hoped to... Uh, take it down to possibly create a walkout basement to the south. But with utilities going in, uh, that cannot happen because the utilities are on the south side. So there are two windows and we'd like to uh, take some of the uh, existing grade, take it down to the corner of the, uh, there's a small bump out and from that bump out, possibly put a retaining wall out to the back to uh, there's like a small fish pond. That will open that room in the basement that you can look out back. Originally, there was a bunch of timbered uh, flower beds and things there that we did remove. That's kind of the scope of the plan on that side. The retaining wall would probably run between 36 and 48 inches as far as the north side of the property there is two windows that for egress out of the basement and now you'd have to crawl through the windows crawl up a ladder and remove a grate to get out what we like to do on that side is put a retaining wall in remove some of that dirt so it can be egress in uh, possibly a bedroom in the future. Okay. Uh, I think the biggest issue, I know it came out of the PRC and I guess it's the, the biggest concern I had was the, uh, the design and uh, stability of the retaining wall. Uh, I think you, uh, provided a uh, hand-drawn and I should say the applicant has requested a waiver from a professionally prepared plan so that is uh, part of the application okay uh, has, has um, Eric has Chris Jensen looked at this do you know Given to him for review, I don't have any comments from him. Okay. I know that he's certainly been aware of the application from the beginning. And I guess the reason we're looking at it is because of the uh, the amount of earthwork involved. Right. Okay. So, uh, knowing that's the case, I guess that's what we ought to be looking at in terms of making sure that what's intended here, if we understand what's what they're doing. Uh, will not cause any issues. And I'm, I'll open it up to the board. Hey, Chuck, it's Bob. I was out there today 
I, I see, I saw what they were doing. Uh, my concern is really they're moving a lot of dirt. Um, and wondering if that one swale at the bottom there is enough to catch anything that's going to run off there, the silt fence. Uh, also noticed that the homeowner or the contractor will be doing it, but it looked like one of the fences or the uh, retaining walls down, down by the pool was over. I was wondering if that was going to be included into this also or just going to be left alone. And I'm also interested to see that they all used uh, slate eight retaining walls but this is a stone wall but no big deal there but uh, it's just a lot of uh, dirt being um, straight Mr. Off, right into the lake Mr. Uh, Reif do you want to respond to that at all so can you repeat that about the uh, retaining wall by the pool you were wondering if we're doing anything with that yeah, because it looks like it was falling over or falling. It looked like it was being heaped up. That's all. You know, wondering if it's going to go down that far, your other um, earth movement. Cool. At this point, I think you're talking the north side of the property. Am I correct? Where the concrete. Uh, I mean, it's on oh, station. It's on station house. Yeah, it's on yeah. station house road. Yep. And is that where the, uh, the concrete from the pool wraps around towards the top of the house, the driveway? There's a small, like yes. a two or three foot high, just a regular stone retaining wall? Yes. Okay, so that would be removed. Okay. The, the plan would be to take that, roughly take that level, the concrete around the pool, and if you notice where the uh, gate is going into the pool off the station house. And okay, going back. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Bob. Yep. Yeah, I just uh, just then concerned about that much of uh, removal with that steep slope there. There, if once it's going to be enough, one of them, because uh, it's straight. Right down, there's one at the end of that driveway that goes down toward the lake. Uh, great for water, but it was clogged, it looked like. But then it's straight to the lake. So I just want to make it one silt fence is going to be enough for all that removal and work. Okay, well, it I, I know uh, Lance, you did a review on this, and, and really this application comes down to a a structure, a retain wall, and um, and construction grading. Uh, so I guess we sort of have to lean on our uh, professionals in terms of uh, both Chris and Lance as to is what's being shown adequate to uh, to protect uh, the the homeowner as well as the neighbors in the lake. Are you there, Lance? Yes, I am here. Uh, yes, the MRB group did provide a comment letter. Um, you know, it's it's one of those items where we, we wanted to see the retaining wall detail. Um, I figured they could provide something uh, to the town for ultimately receiving approval. I think that's important. Um, I, I think that the silk fence um, probably should be extended to make sure that it's, it, it covers the entire uh, excavated area. It looks like to me that it's running um, a little bit short as it runs towards the house, I think I would extend it further just to make sure that any runoff, everything gets caught by the sill fence and doesn't go around the sill fence. Um, I, we did suggest that the sill fence detail from DC be provided just to ensure that you're installing it in accordance with the regulations that they govern that. Um, I guess as a follow up to uh, Bob's comments with sill fence, um, there is an alternative detail that could be provided where they they stake straw bales behind it to give it additional support or do two rows of sill fence, which we've seen done on the lake when we have steep slopes and when we have um, an area of, of concern in which in this case is the drainage whale um, and the neighboring properties. So they could always provide two rows of sill fence in those areas as shown um, to further support the sill fence from any runoff that may um, 
discharge from that excavated area. Um, I do believe it's important um, to identify where the excavated material is going. Um, it's not shown, it just shows the area that you're removing it, but I'm not sure where it's being stored. Is it being placed back on the site when it's done? Is it being removed from the site? And if so, where is it going? That needs to be uh, approved by the town. Um, I think it's also important to note where your existing um, footer drains are, or are they going to be impacted by this? And maybe you're trying to show them by those red lines. I, I don't. I don't know. I just when you're removing dirt of this quantity, uh, those roof leaders go somewhere. I just want to make sure we're not impacting those leaders um, when the material is removed. And if we are, what are you proposing to do so that we can make sure that we're properly conveying runoff? Um, as, as was originally designed to do. And I guess the other thing is, well, you, you have it is make sure you tie down the uh, utility locations because you, you don't want to be uh, mm -hmm. digging into a water line or a gas line. Right, and I think that was referenced earlier in this conversation that- Yeah, and you showed us number six on your yeah. review. <coughs> okay. Uh, Eric, uh, what, uh, assuming we give the approval, conditional approval, uh, what permit does the applicant draw down? Is it a, is that a site, right. site permit? Yeah, site development permit. Okay, and that's reviewed by? Chris Jensen. Chris Jensen, okay. So he would look and be concerned about the design of the retaining wall, I assume? in reviewing that per that application? Uh, I'm not sure, I guess, the extent to which he, he looks at it. He certainly would make sure that it meets the minimum requirements of New York State Building Code. Well, I just want to make sure somebody has an eyeball on the detail for the wall to make sure it's uh, designed properly. And then once it's designed, hopefully built according to the design. So I, I just, Obviously, it's not our purview to do that, but we want to make sure that it's it's looked at somewhere in the process. Yeah, it definitely would be. Um, and Dale would look at it on site when it's being constructed. Okay. Uh, how's everybody feel about a, a second row of silt fence? That is a, possibly a good idea. Belts and suspenders, right? And as far as the uh, as far as the removal of the earthwork, uh, Mr. Reif, uh, I think your note said something about it be taken off site except for a small amount to be left for, uh, I guess, some final grading. Uh, is it leaving the town? <laughs> Do you want it? Do we want it? Yeah. Do you want it? Oh, anybody? Is it have leaving the town? Anybody have a hole in their back here? Hmm. Uh, okay, so you're not planning on dumping it uh, anywhere on the site or uh, anywhere in in close proximity to the lot. Okay. No, there, on, on the south side of the property, there is kind of a gully in the lawn, a kind of a low spot. We probably utilize some of it in there. The rest be hauled off site and out of the town of Canandaigua, uh, for your information. Okay. Uh, so on the north side of the property, that would all be hauled off site. Okay. And as far as the silt fence, do you have a preference two rows versus one row and straw bills? Lance, uh, no, I, I, I don't. I think, I think the concern I heard was one: is it got the capacity to handle it? I think it does, but I think what we typically require um, when we have concerns is a two-row or the staked with a straw bale. I think either would be appropriate in this location. I would just suggest that whatever version you go with, you provide us with an associated detail from the DEC website so that they have references to the measure that's being proposed. Okay. Again, I think being so close to the lake, uh, a belt and suspenders type application would be appropriate because if you do have a breach, 
in the silt fence, there's uh, some, some backup there to uh, keep it from going any further off site. Okay, board, uh, anything else you uh, wanna talk about regarding, uh, I guess the other thing obviously is making sure you get the property stabilized. When, when were you planning on doing the work? Will you be able to get it done and seeded before uh, winter? As uh, cold as it was the past few mornings, I can't guarantee that. But, you know, we'd like to. Depends a lot on when we can get started here. Okay, well, uh, we do one phase at a time, say start on the uh, south side of the property. If we'd run into winter, which that side wouldn't take long, uh, weather turns nasty, we'd quit and wait till spring. Okay. <clears throat> That's a good it's point. I think, I think if you phase the thing to phase it, uh, rather than having the whole property torn up, uh, if you do the south side first, get that stabilized, and uh, then move to the north side and, and work on that, I think that would, uh, uh, you'd have less area exposed. And that would, that would be good. Uh, board members, anything else? Uh, I keep talking here, but uh, <laughs> I'm just, whatever comes out of my head. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. Given all the things we talked about? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All righty. Uh, Lance, were you able to uh, take down all the concerns we had? Uh, I think we were concerned about the wall detail. We were concerned about having some sort of uh, backup system for the silt fence, either a second row or a hay bale system, according to standards that uh, are related to that type of construction. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Reif uh, stated that the, the dirt would be, the excavation would be moved off site. Uh, I think we should ask that it be a two phase construction that the south side uh, be done and stabilized and then move on to the north side. So if that could all be included in our uh, in our action, that would be appreciated. Yep, I can. So you want those as additional conditions, Chuck? Uh, or as findings that we've discussed. So, for example, I, I definitely have the double row of sail fence or the state straw bale, and I'll get the appropriate name to reference as a, yeah. as per the DEC manual is to be installed where the sail fence locations are shown. That would be a condition six. The dirt removal, it's our, I would put something along the fact that it's our understanding that dirt is to be removed from the site. That's to be approved by the town. The location is to be approved by the town, or if in the town. And then seven, you mentioned the two phases. I didn't, I didn't, I can make that a condition if you like. Uh, yeah, if you would, that it'd be, it'd be done in phases, <clears throat> either side of the house. And uh, I, I just want to make sure somebody gets a look and approves the wall detail, because that's that's a major part of this project is, is the construction of a wall. And if and if, if as Eric said, it's part of the uh, site plan or site permit site you know site permit, then all well and good. Chris will get a look at it when he reviews that. Okay. All righty, so uh, since I did all the talking, I will make the motion. Hmm. That we uh, approve a resolution for uh, uh, Burnell Reif representing uh, Burning Lyman. He owns property at 4977 Station House Road, uh, approving a single stage site plan to allow for the uh, uh, regrading and landscaping and construction of retaining wall uh, on on the subject property, do I have a second? A second. And, that, and that motion includes a waiver of uh, professionally prepared site plan. Uh, I didn't say that. Oh, I... no. That I was to, I was going to add that. You know, okay. Put that in there somewhere. Yeah, that would make it nine conditions. I apologize. I didn't have that one. In. Okay. Given those nine conditions, uh, I made a motion. I get a second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Post. Okay. Chuck, this is John. Who's the second? Bob. Bob. Okay, thanks. 
All right, Mr. Reif, good luck out there. Hope you get it done before. Hope you get get done before the snow flies. You never know. Okay. All right. Go. Moving right along. Hmm. Uh, we have an application from uh, Caustic Engineering and Hanlon Architects representing Richard and Elise Rovitz, owners of property at 5265 Menteith Drive, and they're seeking a single stage site plan approval uh, to tear down and rebuild a detached garage. Uh, they did go to the ZBA uh, last week, and they got approval, I assume, otherwise they wouldn't be here tonight. So. Uh, yeah, is uh, someone there representing Kostrick or? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Jay Harris Maxwell with Hamlin Architects, and we're with the team uh, representing Dick and Elite Brovitz. Um, the project has been for this board before under a different project name, um, and the actual uh, main house was before you last year, which is actually under construction now. Uh, this application is dealing with the detached garage at the back end or the east end of the property. Uh, we have a detached garage right now that is going to be demoed and the proposed is going to be a two-story storage barn structure as you see on the screen right now. Um, the house um, is about 15 by 30 and the architectural style is in keeping with the primary residence on the property. It has a kind of a contemporary looking uh, cape feel to it, natural elements of stone, uh, some wood siding and uh, asphalt shingles. And, you know, we tried to look at the um, uh, lakeside guide, shoreline guidelines, but one of the features that this house is so far off the lake that really, um, even though we try to apply those, or they're just kind of not applicable because it's so far, you can't see it from the lake, but um, we try to keep in keeping with the rest of the design of the property. Um, as far as the location and uh, site plan related items, I think Evan's going to have to talk to the technical details of it. Um, so I'll probably turn that over to him now and let him explain a little more with um, some comments that have come back from MRB as well. Sure. So this is Evan Gaffel with Costage Engineering. Um, so as Jay said, you know, the footprint is going to remain basically in the same <clears throat> position, um, which keeps it away from the creek. Um, the as the the roof will be uh, the sheet flow the rain will be captured by gutters um, and downspouts and be um, daylighted to the, the ground via splash blocks um, you know and I think with the roof area there is a berm uh, adjacent to the creek so the flow is going to move kind of north and south um, and, and be able to dissipate into the ground. Um, some other site related um, topics would be, um, you know, we, we meet the, we're still under the building coverage. We're at 9.6% with this uh, building and the overall lot coverage is at 22.5, 125 is allowed. Um, Lance, I did receive your comment letters, letter um, and I don't see anything that we cannot address um, in, in, in that can be done quickly. Um, other than that, I think Jay spoke that, you know, this is situated back in a, a forested area. Um, the levees garage blocks the views um, and, and the house itself kind of blocks where it is. The primary structure of the house is, is taller than this. So, um, you know, it will be lower behind it. Um, and I think also we have received um, some letters of support from the neighboring properties. Um, so that's, that's an overview on my end. Okay. Uh, board members, uh, are you, do you remember this application for the, uh, the house itself? Uh, I guess it's been here, it's been before us recently, and then I think uh, about a year or so before that on a, another type of house. But any, in any event, we're talking the garage tonight, so uh, let's focus on that. Uh, floodplain location, uh, that is shown with the creek. Uh, 
Hey, wetlands. Hey, Joe, Joe yeah. Bob, uh, Go ahead, Bob. My, my only my only question is I I went out and looked at it the other um and my only question is to the setbacks does it uh, fall within the pre existing uh, thing? Uh, they actually are moving it away from the one corner that was on the lot line and uh, moving it a little bit thing to the creek, but the creek is dry now. So that's what I was kind of wondering how the zoning and setbacks went uh, for past. Eric, uh, can you can you address that? Number of times, and actually the previous owner and. Chris Nadler and, and their attorney at the time kind of went over this a bunch of times. They were granted variances in 2013, but they weren't conditioned specifically enough to uh, be held kind of to the plans at that time. And so essentially they will run with the property or have run with the property. So um, what they're proposing to do is in line with those variances granted in 2013. And so to the extent that they do run in line with that, there was obviously the height variance one. Um, but so they're in line with those variances of 2013. It's not necessarily relating to there being a pre-existing nonconformity. That answer your question, Bob? Yep, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, how does the board feel about uh, shoreline guidelines? I, I, we got to at least mention them, we, and I'm mentioning them. Uh, again, I sort of agree with the applicant. It sort of sits back in the woods. Uh, I don't think there's anything they can do or have to do that relates to... Uh, you can't even see it. Once the, the house is built, you won't see it. Do it. Yeah. Right. Okay. I agree. I don't, think it's re I don't think it's applicable in this. Okay. <clears throat> no. okay. We, we can at least sign off that we talked about it. Yeah, yeah I would so like cool. to add this, Chuck. This is Ryan. Sure. If I remember this property, it's pretty tight down there. But uh, along Menteith, I, I remember discussing in, in a few visits, there was Japanese knotweed, I think, infestations down there. Um, can, the do you guys, can the architect speak to that along that berm that's along the creek? Um, there was that berm that was there. And there was an infestation of uh, Japanese knotweed and an invasive species. Yes, that berm is still there, but I think Evan's going to have to speak more to the species yeah. how to remedy that. So I'm not aware of any Japanese knotweed. It's not been brought to my attention. Um, I know the plan was to kind of weed out some of the other invasive species and replace them with more native species um, so that you know, that, that landscape plan um, was approved with the house and would still be applicable to um, the site. Yeah, I, so, I, re I remember with the site plan approval, we were concerned about that bank, making sure it remains stabilized, uh, that the yeah. uh, vegetation on it would be there. We were also concerned, of course, about the creek or the, uh, uh, yeah, the Menteith Creek uh, possibly overflowing, and uh, there has been flooding in that area before. I made sure the applicant was aware of that condition and uh, uh, would not be surprised if the water came up to the front step. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know if we talked about Japanese. Uh, well, I mean, Japanese if, invasion. If we can, if we can, you know, Lance, the the engineers spoke that they're going to remove the invasives. Great. If we could just add that in, that'd be cool as a, as a um, uh, condition. And I do want to just be hot. Two applications or three before, there was, it's common that Menteith will have these gully washers, these large rain events. And there were times when we, when we went uh, to that site and there was material deposited behind that garage that was evidence of a, 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 a large storm event bringing material up and over that bank up against the back of that garage. So Lance, my question is for you is, does this plan satisfy all of those issues with the stormwater events in your professional opinion? Lance, you're muted. 
I, I'm sorry. I had I was getting feedback from somebody else. I didn't know what. I, I think I heard Ryan's comment. Um, I, I don't see any drainage issues with this specific uh, design that's before the board today. Uh, we did ask that the the leaders be shown on the plans so that we can make sure that they're not discharging in a manner that wouldn't be approvable by the town. Um, I'm sorry, Lance, to interrupt you, but just to go back. Uh, in years, in, in, in applications before, the stormwater events that would come down Menteith would sometimes bring significant debris over the bank into the back of that lot and was deposited behind the, uh, the garage. So in your opinion, I just want to make sure that we talk about the fact that this is a delicate site and there could be a storm event that can back up material, water, debris to the back of that uh, garage and so just kind of for the record we're just talking about it so that the applicants aware that we've explored this that everything is going to be safe for anybody that's back there any materials that are in the garage can eventually become part of the lake so yes so Ryan I if I recall correctly on the last project that was before us regarding this same site the board had very similar concerns obviously because it's in the flood flood zone, um, floodplain there. And so there was a note or a condition that was added to the plans that said, the site plans are to be revised to add a note stating that the applicant is aware that the proposed property is subject to flooding and will lease the town of Candaywa from any liability related thereto. That was a condition on the original approval associated with the, the site plan in the house. I believe tonight's approval is regarding the garage I don't know if that needs to be reiterated again associated with this, but this lot, this property, and the building of the house have that condition already on it. Okay, I just wanted to explore that, make everybody aware I'm ready to move forward. Chris, uh, since you're still with us, uh, do you think we should uh, double up on this, on that condition? <laughs> it does not seem he's with us any longer. Oh, okay. For the board's record, that was a condition from the November 26, 2019 approval. Yep, I, I remember it. And it was an acknowledgement that we put on the plan, which was, I think, uh, right. good policy. Uh, right. And, it, and it, this, is not, this is not an amendment to that. This is its own application. So I think that that, app, that that condition, and again, I'm not an attorney, but that condition, I would think, would still be applicable as it relates to the site and that plan itself. Better safe than sorry. Let's put it on. Okay. All righty. Uh, anybody else on the board? Uh, the, uh, I guess, Jay, the second floor is going to be storage, right? All storage? Is, correct. Is, uh, the only utilities in the garage would be electric? Correct. Power? Okay. Um, Did I show a generator next to it? Why was that? Mm -hmm. Uh, the plan is to uh, have a whole house generator at the site. Um, right now, the, the size of that has not been determined. Um, you know, given the size of the house and how that's de derived, I don't know. That's going to be more the contractor and the electrician determining how big that is. Um, so I'm just trying. To, is there a site plan? We're showing it. Yeah. So that generator is going to serve the house, not just just the garage. That's correct. It's just, it's just, that's the location of it. Cool. Yeah, because it's, there's really no room up near the primary structure, you know, where the septic field is and the house and the driveway, just no uh, place to put it where it can be out of visibility. Okay, just make sure it's elevated. Right. Yeah, you know, I gotta say, yeah, we can we please, add, yeah, we're gonna add that note to the, I mean, that is literally where that material showed up. So, you know, it's engineered, the liability's off of us, but heads up on that, that's a, that's, that's intense. Okay. Put, put it up on a pad or something, but we're not requiring that, but just uh, our humble opinion. Uh, the uh, driveway itself, I was trying to figure out where the blacktop ended, stone started, or stone ended and blacktop started. Uh, 
new driveway configuration. And now that new driveway is all going to be what material? Uh, it's proposed cr crushed stone. Okay. So there's no blacktop on the property? No asphalt? No. Okay. So it's just the, I guess, the access road. Yeah, the, <clears throat> yeah, the access road terminates right there. Okay. And that's the end of the blacktop. Okay. Yeah. Uh, while you folks are deliberating a little more and thinking of more questions, then let me go through the, uh, uh, the bookkeeping here. The uh, County Planning Board uh, uh, had no formal action on it. They did review it. Uh, as we stated, the ZBA gave a uh, variance uh, for the uh, height, uh, the one foot height variance. Uh, and I don't know, uh, Lance, did you have that on your comments or in a, as a condition that that variance uh, be noted on the uh, site plan? Yes, condition number six references that all variants approved by the ZBA are to be detailed in the plans, but I do believe I need to probably, I think I need to add it to our findings as well. Okay. Um, let's see, Jim Fletcher had no comments. We talked about uh, Lance's review. Uh, ECB, again, was that reviewed on the 3rd of September, uh, Eric? Did they have any concerns? Do you recall? Uh, I believe it, it should have been reviewed that same day, but no, I think they actually recommended that it be approved. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, anybody else on the board have any questions, <coughs> comments, concerns? If not, we'll move to uh, Seeker. It's a uh, type two action. So it's, I will consider consider a double up here, a bundling of the uh, Seeker and the site plan approval. If somebody wants to make that motion. I'll make the motion to um, <clears throat> bundle the uh, CPN 20055, the single stage site plan approval and the seeker amendment with, um, I'm trying to see the conditions, my plant, seven. my computer's jumping. Seven, seven, seven total people. conditions. Yes. We, we added one, which is regarding the flood, the flood comment from the November meeting. Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, additional comments the board wanted to add. Did uh, Ryan want to have the evasive species as a condition or just put in the oh. findings? All right. Lance, what do you think? I don't understand what, what they could do as a condition. Uh, remo yeah. Remove the invasive species and plant native species. That The engineer said that they were going to do that. Oh, to switch out, actually switch out the plant? Yeah, like actually remove, manage those invasive species as no. part of their lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I and the, no re the reason that's important is because as soon as they well, go to seed and they go into the lake, they're going to make their way all around the lake to everybody's lake. Oh, I, I'm, I, uh, I just didn't know what they could do about it. So that's, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> you got well, I guess my only question is, is who's going to verify that that was done? Hold it for us. Code enforcement, just like we do all the plantings and everything else. Right, but does the, does the code enforcement officer know what is an invasive species is or not? I, I don't know if the code enforcement knows what a tree is, what kind of trees. We, we never asked those questions. I don't want to get into that. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just pointing out that we're putting it on the town and I don't. That's right. And we can leave it that. The town has that training. But that's a whole nother con conversation to be held at someplace else. I agree. I guess, I guess Ryan, the only comment I have on that is given the uh, limits, of, limits of disturbance that, uh, now that are affected to this plant, which is just around the garage, does that make sense? Cause, or would that be, would that have better been on the house site to have that? That yeah, I, I, if I remember correctly, as that driveway came in, um, that the, the 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 infestation was back there near the garage. Okay, 
Yeah. I wasn't sure if you were more over or near the uh, the creek, which is outside yeah. the limits of the disturbance of this plan. That's that was my only concern. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, would the condition be that the town is requiring uh, the applicant to remove all invasive species, or are we simply saying that as as discussed at tonight's meeting, that applicant has agreed to remove all invasive species from the site? Yes, that's 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 what I would prefer. That, I'm just I'm just that's what the that's what the applicant said. We didn't say that. That's what they said. Is that within is that within the project limits though? I mean, the site is pretty big. How far? I mean, we, we're not going to go way back. You said, and, you said it. I didn't say. It. With it, with it, within the you know, the project limits. I don't think way in the back that um, up the creek. Oops, this is my turn to work. Ryan, you you were specific to the Japanese uh, okay, on the sure. bank, right? Yeah. Can we can we? Be specific and say the uh, the Japanese invasion along the bank. Oh sure, okay. sure. Jack, now we sure. That's just, it's kind of, it's the same weed that Tom Schwartz was concerned about, and once it takes over a, a parcel, it's very very hard to manage. Okay. And 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 when we talked about it with the last applicant that owned the house previous, and they said that they were going to manage it. And you know, it's it's it. This is a responsibility. We talked about you know. So I, I'm I'm trying to be as loose as possible, but I think it's important with yeah. that parcel so close to the lake. That stuff can get around the lake very quickly. Okay. Very important. So Karen, you're willing to amend your motion to include that condition? Yes, I would like to include that condition that they okay. agreed to remove. Excuse me. I have a question. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, sir. We're we're in the middle of a motion. I, I'll, I'll I'll let me get a second on this first. Then we'll have a discussion. Uh, do I have a discuss a second on the uh, motion? Second. I got it interrupted in the middle of it. <laughs> Did you all hear it? Okay. okay. So we have a motion a second. I see that uh, Mr. Brovitz is willing uh, like to make a comment. Uh, go ahead, sir. Just trying to understand. So. Are we limiting this to this Japanese weed? Japanese knotweed. Japanese knotweed in the rear area of the property, the berm that's right around the garage area. On the site. What did they say, said Charles? Right, that's, isn't that? There's a meg at the, the berm. The berm house. area that's around, that's on the property. Like it's it's in it's in your very best interest to get rid of that stuff. Okay, so so there's this Japanese knotweed on the berm. Yeah, and if it's and if it's not there, then I'll you know what I mean. Then then maybe it's been managed okay. already. Wait, can we make it clear that you're talking about the berm area, just so we know what we? Is it the berm or the bank? Yeah. Well, I get so I guess. I'd have to go down there and look because that stuff is so invasive. It can take over the whole, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know where it is now. I don't have a documentation of that. Uh, okay. So okay. Ryan, are you saying the property, the, the entire property to be cleared of Japanese knotweed, or are we simply saying the project area as shown on the plans, which is the work area, which is for the most part, and all intents and purposes, the rear portion of the site. I, I guess I'd have to, I guess, I'm, I'm sorry to make this so difficult. I, I, I thought that the applicant said that the, uh, the engineer said that the applicant agreed to manage invasive species and to remove them and plant native species. And I'm just, that's all. I, that, I just want to hold them to the word that they said. That's all. Whether it's yeah. a, and I, I think that was, approved in the previous application for the house. And that was with our, you know, that applied to our landscape plan that we proposed. So any, you know, that wasn't going way back into the property that was, you know, addressing the new landscape around um, what we're showing. But, um, you know, the, the bank is, the, the berm is most of the property. I mean, okay. you can see it, so. Right. Lance, what, how does that condition currently read, please? Yeah, please. 
Well, you, you you stated it, and I think you, uh, we said uh, you gave us two options, and we picked a second option. And what was that yeah, option? How does that I, I think I think if we uh, bear with me as I'm pull, pulling it together, I, I have something along the lines of as discussed, but as discussed tonight at tonight's planning board meeting, um, and agreed upon by the applicant, all invasive species, i.e., Japanese knotweed. In the within the project limits, we're going to be removed from the site. Are going to be removed, right? Are going to be removed from the site, as discussed at tonight's planning board meeting, and agreed upon by the applicant. All Japanese knotweed within the project limits this is what I had was going to be removed from the site. Okay. So let's make it even easier. I'm sorry. Can we make it easier, Lance? All Japanese knotweed will be managed for to be removed because you may never get rid of it again it may ne you may never get rid of it you it's so will be managed they got to manage it, it or else it will take over the property yep so, sounds like it sounds like it's also got to be located so it's <laughs> got to be located and managed okay so that, that's that that's fine okay very good. Uh, did I have a second to Karen's motion? Me? Yeah. Ryan or Bob? Okay, um, I did. Bob seconded it. All right. Is everybody on board? Does everybody understand what we're voting on? We think so. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. You got it. Thanks for your patience, folks. Appreciate Great. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Good luck out there. Yeah, yes. thanks. Bye -bye. Okay. Um, jumping uh, across the line into board business. Uh, we have the uh, minutes from the September 8th meeting that was prepared by Lisa Record. Uh, they got circulated, I believe, in the last day or two. Uh, hopefully, everybody had a chance to look at them. Uh, and are prepared to uh, to approve them or at least make a motion. Uh, do I have a motion for the minutes? Yeah, I'll just say I have not had a time to look at them. I think they just came out today. To me, I just got them today. Do you want to postpone? The I, I would like to be able to look at them, and I didn't look. Okay. At them. All right. How about we push them back to the next meeting so we'll have two minutes, two minutes, two <laughs> sets of minutes. <laughs> we'll have two sets of minutes to look at our next meeting. Okay, guys. I, I All right. We have no referrals from uh, town board, uh, recommendations from the ZBA. Uh, we're down to a couple of letters of credit. People want some money back. Uh, we'll first do uh, John Schneider, or Schneifer, owner of property 4609 Misty Hill Drive. And uh, he wants a release of his full security amount, which was $5,450. And also, we'll take together a request by uh, uh, Royal Car Wash for, I guess it's the final release of $19,770.08. Uh, I think uh, Royal is really looking nice out there. I Hopefully, everybody agrees. I think it's a it's great car wash. I've used it a couple times already. <laughs> yep. Yep. And it looks like the the other one, the competition on three, five, five and twenty, will be uh, nice looking too. So yeah, we are the town of car washes. <laughs> there, shouldn't, there shouldn't be a dirty car running around down of Canandaigua. All righty, uh, do I have a, a motion to uh, accept both of those? Motion to accept both of those. Second. Same. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Okay, they can get their money back. All right, we're almost done, folks. Uh, training, uh, you, you have the note that uh, sexual harassment has to be done by the 1st of October. Uh, hello? <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was my wife getting my children to brush their teeth before they go to bed. That, <laughs> this is right. I thought right. she heard. I thought she heard sexual harassment. She piped up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought she was telling you to brush your teeth before you go to bed. I think she was pointing at you. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so make sure you get that done. Uh, Eric sent out today uh, email uh, listing some uh, online 
training you can do. Uh, so here we are almost in October. So we got uh, three months to get the training done. If you don't know how many credits you need, uh, check with uh, Eric. So let's make sure we get that done. All right, October uh, 13th meeting. Uh, looking at, from what I see, it's a really small agenda. If you, well, we can talk about it. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time. We can maybe move something from the 27th, which is getting kind of heavy, up to the 13th. And specifically, Eric, I'm thinking about the two Venezia houses, possibly. Yeah, I think there was also one uh, harder for Bobbery that when we reviewed it in PRC required a variance for lot coverage. Okay. They did mm. reduce that to eliminate the need for a variance. So there's just site plan approval now too. Okay, and then you got Grove for Tate also, right, for 13th. Okay. What about Chuck and yes. Eric, can you speak to the Ortloff uh, project that's not complete application that we I keep seeing? Uh, I don't know why you're still seeing that. It was only a zoning board thing. Well, actually initially it was for a use variance, but they eliminated the need for that. And then it was just to go to the zoning board it was at the zoning board last week and it did get a variance approval for a 60 something foot setback to the stream there on Butler Road. So as far as planning and zoning is concerned, it's essentially set barring any changes in the plans. Okay, thanks. Okay, anybody else on the board have any questions? Okay, if not, uh, I think we'll uh, reconvene on the 13th of October. Again, we'll do it online. And uh, Eric, is there any reason why we can't continue to go online that we're not uh, violating any uh, rules of Governor Cuomo? Uh, no, I'm not aware of any reason why. Okay, so we'll keep, I, I think for the most part, we, uh, we uh, are able to get things done this way. It, I'm sorry, tonight's meeting took a little longer, but uh, uh, it does, get a little confusing when everybody's talking. So we'll do it on the 13th, same, same time, same bat station. And uh, Eric, uh, or rather Brian, I'm ready for your, take yourself off mute and give us a motion. motion to approve, uh, adjourn this meeting right now. <laughs> right now. Right now. <laughs> About a second? I'll okay. second. I'll second. So Ryan made the motion, I second it. And uh, all in favor? Hi. Right now. Okay. Bye. Right now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.